to, to people who are joined us also here. Uh, Ms. Magda Komaradzka from, from the company, actually, which is, you know, where is Magda? Oh, Magda is here, okay. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, great thanks to our partners, to Deloitte, uh, Tomek Ochrymovic. He's also serving as a panelist today, as, as usually. Thank you very much uh, for small support. My great uh, thanks goes also to, to Warsaw Stock Exchange and Foundation of Warsaw Stock Exchange. Um, there are, I saw Filip Duszczyk and Maciek Bombol. I don't know, they, they must be somewhere here. And also, oh yeah, Maciek is here, okay. Thank you very much for coming. And then um, also Bank Gospodarstwa Krajowego is one of our partners each year. Thank you for all help. And I think we are now in very, very important stage because by no doubt, I think CFA Research Challenge is the most prestigious financial competition for students in the world. There are no such things like that. So, and I think that uh, those of you who, and most of you, I mean, there are people from different teams, you prepare reports, so you know how hard is work on this. It's not that you come one particular day, you will get simple case, and after two hours you, you, you show the results of this case. It's not like this. You work very hard for more than two months, I think. Our lunch was sometime in the end of November, last week of November, and we are you have to deliver this before, I don't know, the very beginning of, of February, sometimes like 5th or 6th of February. So thank you for all these efforts and, and I'm delighted. Uh, before, before we go to the, to the rules, because they are coming very, very soon, I just want to tell you that um, um, the rules are such that one winner of this competition will go to the regional final. Unfortunately, this year, only one winner goes to this because there are rules that say that if there are four, 24 universities from Challenge, we could send two teams. And that was the case uh, two years ago and one year ago, that we could send two teams to the regional final. And this is bad news, but there's also good news. The good news is that when we sent only one team before, always this team advanced to the final. But when you say two teams, none of them advance to the final. So maybe it's good that there will be just one team and I'm, I'm pretty sure that this team will advance to the final. Uh, regional final will take place, okay. At least at this moment, it will take place on the 1st and 2nd of April in, in Jordan. But you know, you never know what can happen in the world with the current situation. Uh, and all, already one, uh, lock, sorry, regional final, which, which is Asia Pacific final was not canceled, but it was moved to the online version. So people, they don't go, I don't know where it's supposed to be, Kuala Lumpur or somewhere like this. They don't come, but they have online competition. So I, I don't know what is going to happen, but if the situation with virus, you know, will spread out, I think that we can think that there might be possibility that this will be also online. I'm just taking this as a scenario, since I'm very often dealing with risk management, so there's one possible scenario, of course, not for today. For today, we know that the 1st and 2nd of April winning team will go to the Dead Sea Jordan for the regional final, EMEA, sorry, EMEA regional final. And I hope that this team will advance also to global final, which will be on the 27th of April, something like this in New York. There will be three or four best teams from different regions. So let's see, this is event format, as, as you know. Uh, there was introduction. I will show you rules very, very soon. There were team presentation. There are six teams. Congratulations. This was excellent. I was, I was greater in the, the, the competition in, the, in Lebanon. They sent me reports for grading. And I think your, your reports are very good. That's it. I'm not saying that Lebanon's reports were bad, but I think that you know, there is a big flavor here in these reports. So there are six teams, and the order of teams was, uh, was just drawn before, so I'll tell you about the orders. And then, of course, there will be short intermission, short or long intermission, depending on the judges. I welcome judges in a moment. And finally, there will be announcement of winners, and of course, you, you can stay for socializing after this. So, okay. These are our judges. Dear judges, thank you very much. Some of you, I mean, two or three of you are not for the first time, so you are not pioneers here. Uh, Alexander Mokszycki, CFA member of the CFA Society Poland board. Uh, Tomasz Okrymowicz, CFA from Deloitte. Uh, Robert Sochacki, board member of Beta Securities Poland. 
famous for um, exchange traded fund, probably. <laughs> Uh, Renata, actually Renata should be on the first place, but they put it in alphabetical order. Uh, Renata van Schellenbaum from, uh, well, you used to be from very important financial institution, but now you are independent, which is also a good idea. I met one of our previous judges just two hours before, close to the Warsaw Stock Exchange, and asked, will you be in the panel? He said, I'm no longer in this bank. <laughs> so he's independent, and similarly, uh, Renata. And Robert Jima from our support, supporting institution, BGK, he's CFA, all the members are CFA, uh, CFA charter holders. Uh, okay. Rules overview 60, you know this, investment recommendation on PESA USA. People were complaining here before that this was difficult company. Each year company is difficult. Each year people are complaining. There were, this is the 11th time, and you know, we had such difficult companies as KGHM, as CCC, as CD Project, as Bogdanka, as Netia, as Cifrowy Polsat, as Warsaw Stock Exchange as a company, even, I think, in the second, second edition, etc., etc. There's 10, time, 10 minute time for presentation. So when you come, you just look whether your presentation will be launched. And then we start the time. Jakub, Jakub is here. Jakub is timekeeper. He might show you, well, one minute left just with the, with, the, with the sheet of paper, but then when 10 minutes gone, he said, time, and you stop immediately, okay? And then there will be 10 minute time limit for Q&A question and answer, so judges will, or panelists, judges will ask the questions and you will answer them. And this is it. Uh, of course, as you know, winners, this is combination of two parts. 50% already is done, so you, you did excellent job. You have 50% of your grade. Another 50 is from the presentation, of course, which, which may change, or that, of course, we don't know. Uh, and that's it. Uh, what is important, here in the room, you have to turn off the mobiles. But also, what is very important, that, uh, that you have to be silent, don't react. Of course, you know this. Uh, also, when one team is, I think it's on the other slide as well. No, it's not here, but when, when the team is presenting, the other five teams will go out. Evelina, where is Evelina? Evelina is here, will take you downstairs to a very nice place. You have to turn off your mobiles at the same time as well. Um, you, you, you should not contact in the time when you are downstairs and the others are presenting. We have also a uh, recording of this, um, of this event. You can watch this recording tomorrow. There will be live on the, not, not live, but it will be taped actually today and shown tomorrow. What else? I think that's about it. Did I miss something for Nico? No, I think it's basic fine. So each time Evelina will take you downstairs and take back upstairs when your presentation time is coming. Um, by the way, since I am the order of presentation, there are, the teams are numbered by, by letters because the grading has been done completely blind in the sense that this is this is double blind. You don't know who was your grade. You will know because we will present at the very end. Uh, but then also they don't know who are you. So they didn't know who, who wrote the report. And actually the same situation is here. They basically judges probably don't know which university are you from. Probably. So the first team presenting will be team N. Second one team K. Then team M. Then team R then team O, and then team P. That's the order of presentation. Uh, there were 16, 16 reports delivered. So you are the best. The best six, which was announced at the very beginning, is the best six comes to the final presentation. There were 16 teams from two or three countries. Were the Latvian team this year? Latvia, there were Latvian team or not? This year there were no Latvian teams, but there were Lithuanian teams. Uh, last year I think there were also Latvian teams because we support this region uh, so that's basically it about this. This is scoring presentation. So with your judges, you will have a sheet of paper and you will you'll just put the, the grade for each, camp, for each team. Uh, after this, you will go to one room, uh, just your five. You will put all the numbers and then you will report this at the very end. We put this on the Excel spreadsheet and we'll see who is the winner. Okay? Sounds, sounds easy, I, think. I hope. Okay, so these are, you know, these things that are taken into account, but you know this because it was in the rules published before. Um, 
Uh, now I would like to ask um, Magda for a short presentation, short statement, because I see this is your, you know, this logo of your company. So. Good afternoon, my name is Magda Komaracka and I'm from Kizet USA. I head up the research department uh, in the company and I don't think I'll deliver the presentation because we already did you last already time <laughs> when, we, when we met in our headquarters. I just wanted to say that I'm, uh, in the name of my company, I'm really, really glad that we had the opportunity to become uh, the target company of this year's uh, research challenge. Um, one, as a head of IR, I had the opportunity to present uh, the company to the wider uh, universe, a wider group of people who I believe will enter the capital market. They will become our investors, our analysts, or even PZU group uh, employees. So I'm really, really happy that we had that opportunity and that you had the opportunity to look more into detail into PZU. Two, as a CFA charter holder, I'm really happy that uh, this year's uh, participants of CFA Research Challenge had to deal with such a um, complicated company, because this is not the easiest one uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the Warsaw Stock Exchange. Uh, so I'm really, really glad about this. Um, I didn't get to read your reports because this is based on uh, this is based on the rules of this contest. But based, judging on your questions that you sent us, uh, it seems that the level of the reports seems to be really, really high. And this is also resulting from the information that I got. So I'm really looking forward to getting to hear the presentation and potentially reading the reports uh, later. And what else? I keep my fingers crossed. For the uh, for 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 the regional final, that any of that, that one of the teams will get through, and obviously for the final final, because I'm, my dream is that PZU will be presented in New York. So, good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you are completely right that these reports after the competition, these six reports will be sent to 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 your colleagues and to yourself. And maybe you can use some ideas from these reports to pursue great strategy. Um, okay, and don't blame Magda for difficulty of company. Okay. And now I ask a representative of Warsaw Stock Exchange, just for a few words. Maciek, is it you? Okay. Maciek Bombol from Warsaw Stock Exchange. Uh, Maciek is one of the very first uh, investment advisor and chief financial uh, and CFAs in Poland. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I have third license in Poland as uh, investment advisor, and I have charter holder, CFA charter holder for nearly 20 years. No, don't ask. Yeah, 20, 20, 20. Okay. Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very glad to um, to host you here on local final of the CFA uh, Institute Research Challenge. Uh, on behalf of the president, Marek Dietl, uh, re I represent the Warsaw Stock Exchange here, uh, who is a partner and venue host. This event reminds me of my previous uh, participation in challenges, uh, CFA Institute Research Challenges. Uh, I was involved in uh, a few first uh, challenges. I remember the first uh, Ten years ago, the first uh, uh, the first company uh, target company was Amrest. Uh, I remember that uh, most of the teams uh, gave uh, by recommendation for Amrest. Uh, as you can check, uh, Amrest uh, has um, a very good uh, performance. Um, current valuation of Amrest is uh, seven times uh, higher than ten years ago. That means that it was really very, very good, excellent investment. I wish you all, all of the team, all of the teams, uh, smart recommendations, uh, outstanding presentations of presentation of reports. Uh, I hope that uh, the winner of our local winner uh, could uh, compete successfully with uh, with other teams uh, in uh, regional or even uh, global level. Thank you. Ah, sorry, oh. ah, I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't remember. No, sorry, 
uh, you received something, this leaflet, it's index uh, investment challenge. You can, uh, you can compete, you can, you can register and you can, you can, uh, you can try to, to win. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, the, this, this competition on the kind of building portfolio, etc., this investment challenge was launched for the first time, I think, and it's, it's our Polish local competition. I should mention also that after this, in a few weeks' time, or maybe even earlier, we'll start CFA Ethics Challenge. This will be third edition of Ethics Challenge. It will be in Polish. Uh, use Polish cases, so I also welcome you in this competition. Probably the end will be around April or May, the final. Kickoff is probably the end of April, something like this. So. Okay, and uh, now I ask also Tomek Ochrimowicz for a few words. Professor, uh, good afternoon everyone on behalf of Deloitte. Uh, we welcome you here. We congratulate to everybody who participated in this competition and who managed to get to this stage. Six best, best teams, uh, well done. Uh, we wish you uh, excellent presentations, smart recommendations. Um, be proud of yourself already because you've uh, managed to do what not many uh, um, students uh, have done so far. Uh, this is a great experience, uh, uh, very much uh, valued by employers. Uh, good, uh, a good uh, step in your professional career. I, I disagree with you, Mr. Professor, that this, this, this year is particularly difficult. Uh, the insurance industry, the banking industry, the, the, the PC2 itself is a uh, is a big challenge, but it's, uh, I, I agree. Did you last year? No, no, well, true, true, but every year, the, every year, the teams are getting better, the reports are getting better, the presentations are getting better, and the companies are getting more difficult. Uh, so, well done, and uh, congratulations, and best of luck. Thank you. Yeah, we use, uh, you are correct, we use this um, idea benchmark from, from hedge fund industry, watermark. So each year is better reports, but more difficult company. I don't know which will be the next one, but be sure that it will be more difficult. I think so. Okay. And your reports will be better. I think that's about it as far as introduction is concerned, just to make sure. Yeah, this is about just information, you know, here about these regional finals. Uh, I understand that Asia Pacific Regional will take place in, in, in online. I'm not sure whether which date will be, but possibly they have to organize because these are semifinals and finals, so it's a big task to do it online. It's not like, you know, just a few teams, etc. We will see. And then, of course, at least for now, the, the regional is, is in Jordan. We will see what will happen. Global final uh, in, in New York, and so hope that one of you will be there. Good luck. So I think we should start. And um, okay, <laughs> just to make sure, Evelina will take all teams, with the exception of Team N. It's all good. The control, the control for the clicker is not here. Control for the clicker. One, one, two, two. One, two, three. Hmm? Does it work? I think it's easy. No, it works.
Ja? Dear ladies and gentlemen, today we would like to present you our investment recommendation for PZO. PZO is undoubtedly one of the largest and oldest insurance company in Poland, operating in Ukraine and Baltic states. However, since 2015, after taking on board Alior and Pekal, it became one of the largest financial institutions in CEE region. PZO main business activities are insurances, life and non-life with motor insurance and group insurance premium as a major part of gross return premium. PZO is also a major shareholder in two Polish banks, Alior and PKO. Alior is a relatively young bank with very advanced technological infrastructure. It's on an eighth place in terms of total assets. It provides services for SME client and retail as well. PKO, however, is the second largest bank in Poland. It provides the services for corporate clients and mortgages as well. PZO is very active in investment sector. It invests mainly in fixed income instrument to maintain the very stable um, insurance port investment portfolio. Very promising sector for PZO is healthcare. Due to some major acquisitions, it became third healthcare provider in Poland. Taking all that into account, we would like to initiate our equity research with hold recommendation for with 12 month target price of 42.6 PLN. To give you the more vivid picture of our recommendation, we would like to draw your attention to four key investment drivers. But before we dive into them, let's shed some light to macroeconomics. It is a no fact that Poland is one of the faster growing economy in EU, despite the economic slowdown, and we expect the Polish economy to retain a growth trajectory over the next five years. Moreover, we do observe a downward trend regarding the unemployment rate in Poland. Regar despite the wages are expected to grow in the midterm, following the wages, saving rates and private consumption are expected to follow the same trend. However, the demographic situation is still uncertain for PC2, with aging population and decreasing birth rates. Regarding the life insurance, we expect a period of stagnation in our forecast. Historically, the life gross return premium has been decreasing, showing a negative relation with the GDP growth. This trend is mainly caused by the issue in the market of toxic assets such as unit-linked products. However, PZ2 was not heavily involved in this market situation, and that's why it managed to retain a significant market share in the, in the sector. However, Moreover, in the non-life segment, we expect a growth in the market. The growth will be mainly driven by the increased number of new car registration as well as the booming real estate market. These two components combined together are, are expected to increase the gross return premium for the company. We, and these two segments account for more than 80% of PZ2 non-life business segment. The motto of PESU is its ultimate value proposition. Whatever the customer profile or the product needed, PESU is able to offer it. From corporate and mass insurance to individual and life insurance, up to banking activities and finishing out with investment and function activities. The new segment is the healthcare. It develops quite rapidly and we do see the further complementarity of the segment with the existing ones, creating even further synergies. Interestingly enough, PESU has a unique model tailored for its retail clients, which supports them throughout the whole life from birth to retirement with the various set of insurance products. Additionally, Peso has a very complex and extensive distribution network, which facilitates the delivery of the insurance product. Peso has managed to sustain a very leadership position in the insurance sector, which makes the company less sensitive to the pricing cycles and competition. The company is quite reluctant to engage in any pricing wars or aggressive market capturing. PESO, as we mentioned, is a parent of two large banking groups in the company. We also would like to highlight that the potential of merger of MBank and Pekao is also quite decent for them. It would ameliorate the profitability for the first one while enhancing the obsolete IT systems of the second. But there is a high chance of overpayment. Now let's take a look at these two crucial financial indicators. PZ2 managed to keep its combined ratio on a good and stable level, significantly outperforming its direct peer group. 
It would also be egregious to omit the fact that Pizzuto offers one of the best returns in equity in the industry, staying above 20% and be way ahead of its peers. The banking subsidiaries have also shown decent performance with return on equity and net interest margin being more or less on the level of market average. Speaking of the credit risk management, Allure has still a great room for improvement in that regard with cost of risk ratio hovering at all time high of 2.3%. Speaking of the capital requirements, Pizzuto demonstrated an immense efficiency meeting them in both life and non-life segment. Its banking control groups have also comfortably met the regulators criteria. What is certainly worth highlighting is that both Allure and Pekao had virtually no exposure to CHF denominated loans keeping the books healthy. What was certainly extraordinary about this company is its dividend yield. Seven on a level of 7% and showing greater returns than Poland 10 year government bonds, but also outperforming European insurance index and week 20. All this without significant capital gains. Let us now talk about the valuation. To arrive at 12 months target price, we applied two methodologies. One was some of the parts DDM to account for a complex nature of the Peso Group business. We also valued the company with price to earnings standardized multiple and price to book value regression. All the methodologies were given the same weight. Our initial priority was to assess the Peso core operation by assessing gross return premium in both life and non life, coupled with the costs. With all inputs in place and solvency requirements, we arrived at the DDM output for the company. Secondly, we assessed the performance drivers of the bank. PECO and Allure, those obviously being loans and deposits, taking account the interest and commission earned, coupled with costs and the capital requirements, we arrived at the DDM outputs for the bank. In case of PECAO, we analyzed its well-established position, while Allure is a high-risk but high-growth asset. Apart from some of the parts, we valued the company with a relative valuation. We selected our comparable universe based on the criteria of the similarity of their business activities to PESO, also, the factor was being domiciled in Europe. Our first valuation methodology was standardized price to earnings. Secondly, we valued the company using the price to book value regression. We did the regression of return on equity and price to book value multiple for of the selected peers. Although we proceed with the best case scenario, there are certain risks to be aware of. First of all, first of all the company is exposed on political risk manifested by politically engaged, uh, pro engagement in projects and uh, politically induced lack of the management board stability. Secondly, there is a market risk which is expressed in insufficient profitability of the banking sector fueled by low interest rate environment and rising inflation, but also by the burden of capital requirements and uh, banking contributions, not to mention income taxes. Additionally, there is a risk of overpayment for acquisitions, exemplified by Allior that lost 70% of its market value since being acquired by PZ2. Therefore, we should include this in a potential analysis of merger between PKO and MBank. Lastly, there is a macroeconomic risk which includes pricing cycle of the non-life segment and demographic, negative demographic trend. After taking an overarching view of positive valuation and taking into, taking into account its inherent risk, we arrived at 12 months target price of 42.6 slotty. It is important to mention that core business segments of PISA 2 demonstrate little growth dynamics, albeit having low risk profiles. It helps the segment was rated with medium risk, but with high growth potential, as envisioned by management. To conclude, PZ2 is a splendid and a mature company that offers a full-fledged financial services value proposition to its clients, unlike any other competitor in the industry. On top of that, it has a healthy financial performance and offers, offers tremendously high dividend yield. However, all of this information has already been discounted in the price, and we do not see any catalyst prompting significant breakouts or earnings momentum in the short run. Additionally, PZ2 banking operations have been gone under significant external pressure on the performance. Having said all that, we rate PZ2 as hold, however, the positive outlook, considering the long-term value driver, and that being the healthcare segment of PZ2. Thank you for your attention, and we're open to your questions. Thank you very much for uh, relax for a second. Are you ready yeah. for taking questions? Sure. Okay, so the time starts, dear judges. Um, first question, uh, what's the biggest challenge for the company for the next years? Uh, and my second question is with regard to the current management board. What's your assessment of the management board and the influence of the current management on the company valuation? 
Let me start, right? First the challenge and then the management. Two questions. Two questions. So may I start with management board? Sure, yeah. Thank you. So actually, when we investigated the topic of management board, we saw that the management board is really specialized in plenty of fields. The uh, very interesting fact is that the CEO uh, is, has a PhD in philosophy. Other, um, other members of management boards are specialized in the field of finance, insurances, and technology. One person from management board is quite associated with the politics. When we also investigated the tenureship, the time when, we, when they are in the management board, we saw that on average they've been for two and a half years. This is quite alarming sign due to the fact that um, often uh, changes in management board may be quite alarming for the uh, company stability. Uh, when it, the terms of challenge, sure. So basically, um, we analyze Pazoo in the context of four segments, right? They have the insurance, which is quite stable. stable. The issue with non-life is mostly connected with the pricing cycles, when the companies engaging in the sector are actually push, pushing on the policy prices, right? So basically, in this particular case, Pazoo decreased their market share, but the company stated that they will not engage in such wars, and after the pricing cycle ends and move to the soft phase, right, it will recover. We do believe that there is an issue with the banking sector. That's why on the metrics it was ranked as the, let's say, medium risk. The issues are connected, first of all, with a very high effective tax rate. It's comprised of the banking tax, the normal seed tax. They're paying now to the banking guarantee fund. There are also resolutions with the Court of Justice of European Union in the favor of the customers who took the CHF denominated loans, which puts another pressure on the bank which is not very the case for these banks, but this could be a factor decrease in the price for M bank, for example. The healthcare issue is the new segment for them. We do believe that they have a good chances. They had a lot of cash. They can enter the market. It's decentralized, it's private. And the puzzle, we kind of believe that it's in line that they can acquire the first place as they state in the strategy. So we believe that the banking phase fueled by macro from one side, and fueled by regulation requirements from another side, also taking account higher CANAF requirements on the equity capital which should be staying in a company. These are the main, the main factors which are influencing 30% of the revenue of the company, which is banking activities. Thank in you In terms much. of the challenges, if I may interrupt you, uh, the health is, as like I mentioned during the presentation, a very uh, strong field in which the company can operate, actually. Uh, there is a very important topic, the project transformation, which is the in which project the Pazito is focusing on creating new places, new pharmacies, and extending the network of its uh, partnership places and own as well. Uh, in their strategy, the company decided to, to spend 800 million uh, on um, developing health sector, whereas only, maybe not only, it's quite a big amount of uh, money, 450 million on acquisitions only in healthcare sector. Additionally, there is a risk of overpayment uh, in case of the merger between M-Bank and PECA Audit. We also analyzed it as a, one of the challenges for the company. Okay, then following up those risks, how were they reflected in the DCF valuation? And what is the 1% specific view in case of PKO? How did you arrive at that one? So I would probably start with, with these things. I would start with specific risk premium. So the approach to that was taking the betas of the sector, of the banks, and then our team asked ourselves a question. So what is really specific about PECAO, which other banks, which is not reflected in the beta, does not, do not have, right? And for PECAO Bank, uh, we actually arrived first thing, is the management turnover. Unfortunately, when the management changes, it's not like, very qualitative thing, it actually moves the board to the new policy, to the new goals, and market is actually disturbed. When Mr. Krupinski left the company, or we also what happened, right? That's one thing. Secondly is the company actually has one of the worst, I would say, but medium maybe, IT systems in the market. So now they are planning to have an engagement with MBank, but for now this is, we believe this is a long-term disadvantage and other banks in the sector 
would have it in a better shape. Um, maybe a few, few more recent evaluations and elaboration more. I think we mentioned most of them, but also the, again, the political risk is there. You know, the possibility of reshuffles, that's, that's something that we could add to the, to, the, to the components that were included in the cost of, cost, cost of risk premium, sorry, at the equity risk premium. Um, and I think at this stage, it's more or less developed, right? I'm saying like technically the way how we address those issues is having a matrix of risks, right? And saying what beta of the sector of the banks does not, do not reflect, does not reflect, right? What is different in those banks? So we had like five factors, I think, the biggest actually risk specific was attributed to Alior, which did have very doubtful engagements, which does have very unhealthy books now, engagement in a few politically projects, that's one thing. A few unhealthy projects such as Scania, financing one oil and gas company, so they need to create large empowerments. And this is not attributed to the whole sector and the beta of the whole sector from the methodological standpoint. Yeah, if I could also elaborate on that. Uh, speaking considerably of, about Alior, as my colleague just mentioned, they have the, the issues in terms of the credit risk management and something that we elaborated on. It's manifested not only by taking the doubtful borrowers, but it's, it's attributed to the aggressive scale in considering that the bank is relatively young. If you compare it to the PECAO, which is stable with cost of risk of around 0.46%, which is almost 2% difference for what Alior has, and that is also attributed to the fact that they mostly focus on the consumer and cash loans, which with, coupled with the poor credit risk management in, uh, decreases the quality of the assets, something that is also noticed by the market, and considering the price to book value is half of its peers, it's something that the market notices, and therefore, therefore it cooperates into the market valuation. So, uh, one question, if you uh, were to name uh, one strategic direction uh, from the industry uh, that would make you, your recommendation buy, so it would make, would push the company forward much more than any other, what would you name? I would say that there could be two different possibilities. First of all, as we said, as we mentioned before, the health segment is going to be boosted, boosted in the next future, especially thanks to the acquisition that the company is making in these years. But also, as we mentioned before, in the matrix with the gross return premium in the life segment and the GDP growth, we assess that, the con that right now the life segment is still decreasing, but despite the GDP is growing, right? So there is an upside potential for the life segment, for PC2 and generally the life segment, to increase the revenues from that segment. So the company could invest more in the segment, offer additional products in order to expand and make more gross return premium from this area. And I just want one thing from a methodological standpoint. So the reason why we actually believe health is very good, but this still is not a buy recommendation, because when the company is starting out it now, and these cash flows would be somewhere in the future, as they say, they are discounted by the cost of equity, it does not bring that much value. One more thing, which is actually Peso is elaborating on, they have, um, they have four, three segments, which are complementary, and there could be synergies between those. So this, this is one thing which also can, if it's strengthened, it can also bring some additional value for the company. I yeah. noted that you considered political and economical factors in your valuation. What social and technological factors, in your view, affect the valuation of the group? Uh, first, technological. We believe that the company is uh, keeping up with the speed of technological trends uh, in industry. Uh, there is a cooperation with startups. They're implementing uh, modern technologies, modern solutions with usage of uh, artificial intelligence and big data solutions. Uh, additionally, in terms of social trends, we believe that uh, in terms of... Uh, Thank you very much. And um, now you have to go downstairs and your colleagues will come. And you know, in some time, we'll come back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Thank you, uh, So that, that, was, that was team N, and now team K is coming. Oh, yeah, that's team K. Hey, Team K. Come to the stage. Check the microphones. Check your presentation. Yep. This is the... Advice to change slides. When you are ready, just tell, and we'll start the time. One, two, one, two. Is it working? Six, one, two. One, one. And one, two, three. Okay, we are ready. Okay, start. Life is complicated, and sometimes things just don't go as planned. Luckily enough, Puzu is a company that can help you plan the journey, and if something goes wrong, they will be with you to put it right. Puzu is an insurance provider that is currently that has been established over 200 years ago, and it is one of the largest. This is the largest insurer in Poland. Being the market leader, the company provides comprehensive and innovative insurance uh, insurance services with life, non-life, and health segments. Being uh, uh, it is important to mention that the company has been expanding its operations quite actively, and that essentially means that the company now has a controlling stake in two very well-known Polish banks, Bank Pekao and Bank Alor, under its wing. And in fact, banking activities are of vital importance as they contribute to more than 20% of total revenue generated by the company. Likewise, 95% of total revenue generated comes from services provided in Poland, signaling the importance of domestic market. And with this, we are Team K, and today we will be issuing our hold recommendation on Puzu with a target price of 43.86 Polar Zwoty, utilizing a 9.05% upside. Our valuation takes into consideration four main factors, including strong domestic market position, hindered by limited market growth, along with macroeconomical uncertainties and financial challenges of the company. So to analyze the macro environment, we apply the Pastel model. And starting with the political factors, the currently ruling PIS party is rather conservative. And consolidation of state ownership is seen in multiple sectors, with insurance and banking being no exception. PZU's majority, major stake belongs to the state, after all. In addition, in the near future, the European Central Bank uh, may begin a tightening cycle and raise interest rates, which will likely induce the National Bank of Poland to raise interest rates accordingly. Now, some economic factors signal a positive outlook and some not as much. We've seen strong GDP growth in the previous quarters, however, it has been slowing down. In addition, in the current low interest rate environment, it is more than ever challenging to balance the required returns on investments and maintain solvency ratios. Mixed outlook on indicators, uh, as well as fluctuating business and consumer confidence, ultimately reveals that there is no single consensus about the future of the market at the moment but the risk of economic slowdown is still present. As for demographic factors, which affect marketing, pricing, and strategic decisions, um, tendencies are more or less similar to the rest of the European Union, whereas technological factors and the rising significance of environmental movements challenge the current business model and create the necessity to innovate. In addition, adverse environmental developments are also, are also impactful to insurance operations, and they are quite difficult to forecast precisely. As for legal factors, the industry is heavily regulated on both national and EU levels. So to conclude, current macroeconomic outlook yields neither strictly positive, neither clearly negative outlook. But what it does give is a lot of uncertainty about the future. And considering this, we've taken a more conservative approach towards our valuation. For PZU and markets, uh, we ex expected uh, limited growth. Uh, Pizu operates within advanced European markets, which, ha which have well-developed life and non-life insurance segments in terms of both number of players and product range. Due to these reasons, Polish insurance market potential is somewhat limited. 
In addition to that, non-life insurance premium growth is expected to be around 2% in the upcoming years. We see a fairly similar situation with respect to life insurance. In terms of health insurance, it has been constantly growing throughout the past three years, and uh, it constituted only 3.5% of total PSU gross written premiums in 2018. As a matter of fact, Polish insurance market penetration in 2018 was more than twice lower compared to European average and almost three times lower compared to OECD total, indicating opportunities for expansion. However, general trend in Polish insurance market are currently changing. During the recent years, market has reflected a moderate growth in, the, in demand for non-life insurance and sharp decrease in life insurance de demand. This results in relatively stable penetration ratio in Poland and it is expected to remain, uh, to remain at a similar level uh, as probability of breakout would require massive changes in consumer behavior and regulatory environment. Pazu Zice and Aviva uh, accounted for more than a half of Polish life insurance market while Pazu, Ergo and Lang Group accounted for almost 70% of Polish non-life insurance market. In line with other market players' actions to stand for a position in Asia, consolidation of Polish insurance market is expected to continue. Implementation of technological solutions into business model uh, also puts additional pressure on Pazu business operations since the number of tech-based insurance companies increases. Taking all the facts into consideration, net return premiums of a company were growing at a stable 8% rate CAGR throughout the last few years. We believe that the company will maintain a strong 95% customer a retention ratio for that diverse service portfolio, but we do not expect premiums to grow at a similar rate, mostly due to uh, the decreasing Polish GDP growth and limited opportunities in the saturated market. Uh, we also expect combined ratio not to increase uh, significantly uh, and return on equity measures to remain at the company's target level of approximately 22%. Uh, also, we expect a strong 75% dividend payout ratio signaling stable returns to shareholders of the company. In terms of cash uh, generating power ratio, the two company has kept it uh, low constantly throughout the years, meaning that the majority of cash inflows are actually from sale maturity of investment. Uh, fixed assets and cash and cash equivalents contribute to 53 and 29% of total, asset, total investment portfolio accordingly. Also, investment assets and receivables are major parts of total asset, asset structure. Therefore, we indicate some risk here primarily related to interest rate. Although uh, investment income is growing at a stable rate, uh, in case of low interest rate environment, the two group would be uh, forced into going into investment with higher risk. We have tested our investment thesis by using dividend discount model, which accounts for 75% of the evaluation and relative valuation for the remaining 25%. We see Pizu has been paying dividends through nine, for nine years consecutively. And looking at their stable dividend payout policy, we believe that DDM is a reasonable proxy for our valuation. Additionally, to increase the accuracy of our valuation, we tested Pizu among its peers by using price to earnings and price to book value multiples. For DDM, we have used the risk-free rate of 10-year Polish government bond, and along, of, and along with equity risk premium of 6.04%, we have obtained the cost of equity to be at 8.14%. The target price of 45.25 Polish Zloty was arrived by using capital asset pricing model. As our company uh, is um, operating in the financial industry services, um, we have also thought that uh, and opted for an equity sad valuation as we believe that is reasonable. And this approach gives us a target price of 39.70 Polish Zloty. When selecting our comparables, we have primarily judged them based on primary revenue structure, asset structure, as well as countries of operations. However, due to the fact that there was a lack of direct comparables for our valuation, we have decided to underweight this method. To finalize our analysis, we, made, uh, we looked at what kind of factors can negatively influence the growth of this two company. We primarily identified technological, saturated market, slowdown of economy, political risk, and interest rate risks as our primary risks. Uh, these factors can negatively diminish the growth of the two group. And now to briefly overview corporate governance, the state's major stake determines many factors, starting with dividend policies and moving on to demanded transparency and expertise of the management, uh, which at the top level is comprised of the supervisory board and the management board. Uh, members of management board on average have extensive experience in the industry and have held managerial positions in other dominant financial firms. Hence, we assume the management is informed enough 
to make adequate, reasonable decisions and is professional enough to deal with the risks involved in the business. There's one more thing that should be mentioned, the potential acquisition of Ambank. Ambank is a fully digitized bank, and we believe that without the potential synergies such as sale of insurance products through, uh, through Ambank's distribution channels, we also believe that the Ambank's innovative banking platform could be also adopted by Bank Picao or Bank Alor in the future as well. However, as of today, we see very limited market, we see very limited information in the market, and we have decided to prepare a separate analysis to evaluate the acquisition, the acquisition impact on our valuation. Ultimately, we believe that Pizu is a very well-established company. However, these days, being the market leader is just not enough. And therefore, we recommend staying conservative, we recommend holding. However, who knows? Perhaps the acquisition of Mbank will be the breakthrough that is much needed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Relaxed? Ready to take questions? Yes, yes okay. we are. Ready? Don't start. So, uh, how do you um, see the biggest challenges for the next uh, years for PC2? The next the few years, what are the biggest challenges for you? Uh, so, this question could be split into two categories. First, the internal strategy of the PSU, and the second, the market environment. First of all, we see that internally, the company is very much uh, looking for uh, potential acquisitions. Why is this the case? Perhaps it could be an influence of the government, perhaps it could be influence on the consolidation within the financial industry, which leads us to the external factors, where Pizu is seemingly want to acquire more companies, that way establishing its insurance sector. Uh, they are not looking to diversify too much of their portfolio with big purchases in other segments, and we believe that actually following the strategy that, has, that is uh, taken by the other competitors on the European level, which is, as we mentioned previously, going to the Asia, going to the more emerging markets where we see a higher return, where we see a higher uh, insurance penetration ratio than in Poland, we see that this is the, this is the problem, that the PZU is more focused on the Polish domestic market and is not looking more on the uh, broader scale of the picture. Additional, uh, if I may add, additional risks uh, are concerned with the macroeconomic environment. So, for example, currently we see low interest rate environment, which is kind of unusual and challenging, especially for a business which uh, uh, relies a lot on investments. So, current in low interest rate environment makes it quite difficult to achieve the required level of operations, uh, not only in insurance, the main uh, the main segment of operations, but also in banking. I'm having a question regarding valuation. Uh, your target price as presented was around uh, 43 zloty, slightly higher. Uh, in your analysis on, on valuation methodology, you are showing uh, the, the slightly different value, which is 39.7. And in the appendix, you have a showing target price of 45.7 slot. So uh, if you could just explain that, those differences, please. Uh, yeah, in order to elaborate, the appendix that you were looking at is the potential acquisition of M-Bank scenario that we have evaluated by introducing uh, and adding the current M-Bank's assets in, and, and for, uh, forecasting cash uh, income for uh, the Pizu in case it, the M-Bank was acquired fully by the Bank Pakal, which is under uh, Pizu. And by actually taking into consideration the potential acquisition of M-Bank, what we see is that M-Bank, if talking more directly about it, uh, we see that it, is, it does not have such stable dividend payout policy. In fact, it is fluctuating. They have been paying in around every third year or so. It has been around 20% in terms of dividend policy. While on the other hand, Pizu and Bank Pekka and all the companies have very stable, and it is around 75%. So if we increase, if, we, if the acquisition would happen, and the potential um, pressure from Pizu would increase the dividend payout policy of, of a bank, our model would increase the potential acquisition price, if that is the case. But for now, if we talk about the, our main valuation method, we have used um, dividend discount model for 75, which is one price that you saw on the slides, and for the other relative valuation. Could you elaborate how the increase in interest rates uh, will affect the valuation? Okay. 
So the increase in interest rates uh, would most likely impact the investment side of the insurance business. Uh, because, uh, as you may know, the insurance business operates mainly through two, two channels. So first, uh, there are premiums collected from the customers, and secondly, those premiums are invested in order to ensure cash flows, which would flow back to the firm. And uh, these cash flows are achieved through investing those premiums in some portfolio. So if interest rates w were to decrease, the investment returns on those uh, inv the return on investments would be dimin would, would diminish. I'm sorry. You, you. Oh. So if interest rates would increase, this would mean that the uh, expected cash flows were, would uh, increase as well. So if expected cash flows would increase, the whole value of the group would increase accordingly. Uh, if I may also add, um, in, when doing our evaluation, we have treated the banking sector of Bezu as an as an investment, as for, for the income, we did not treat it as a separate industry. We believe this is an investment and Pazoo sees itself primarily as an insurance company and that is what we wanted to reflect in our evaluation method. In, case, in order to evaluate and to forecast the interest rates, what we did is we used the historical investment income from, for the company and we then uh, established and taken the National Bank of Poland forecast for the VIBOR and we calculated the, uh, the, the markup on that regard. Well, uh, I have two questions. One is regarding the valuation model. So in the appendix a uh, few minutes ago, you discussed the M-Bank scenario. And in the presentation, when you showed the DDM assumptions, um, there is actually no split of the business, different business units, so PKO, Allior, and PZU. Did you use the same, same assumptions? Or could you please elaborate more? And the second question, at the beginning of the presentation, in discussing macro environment um, uh, factors, you mentioned CSR and basic, basic ESG, ESG factors. Did you analyze it a bit uh, more, or was it just, you know, don't worry about this question. It's something that may give you, in my opinion, some competitive edge, and if you did. Okay, uh, so starting with the first part of the question, in terms of valuation, we treated, uh, we treated Pazoo Group uh, as not necessarily a separate, uh, in, in terms of group level, we did not really analyze each entity separately, but what we did do is we grouped them into three parts. So first thing, what we tried to do is we tried to see whether the uh, separate insurance segments, for example, life, non-life, health insurance, how do they look, what are the forecasts, what are the growth, and how can we actually group them into one, or should we forecast them in separate ways and for separate companies? So what we did, we grouped them because, as mentioned previously, we see the inverse relationship that, and growth that is going on right now in Poland, specifically and primarily that non-life insurance is going uh, up while life insurance is going down. So therefore, it kind of declines, and so we took this as a one big branch so for the income, uh, income forecast. As far as the banks go, what we did, we, uh, we looked at the banks separately, the Bank Pekoa and Bank Alor. However, we merged their, uh, merged, merged their income as an investment income, as I've mentioned previously, and took the historical average to see, uh, to treat the banks as separate investments. Uh, I guess for the CSR? Yes. So uh, I will be addressing the CSR question. So, um, in fact, yes, we analyze, when we're analyzing corporate governance, we uh, came upon uh, various initiatives that the group uh, is, is taking in order to reduce their carbon footprint. So, for example, in offices, they encourage the um, less usage of paper and so on. But uh, what's really caught our mind is that uh, PCTU uh, has initiatives to train their employees in environmental um, kind of to build their environmental consciousness, which was uh, a little bit surprising to me and also a very nice initiative, which is, of course, one of those uh, environmental um, initiatives which truly contribute to the whole ESG system. As, okay, so maybe last question. Uh, um, the uh, management board, your assessment of the management board and the influence of the ownership of the company on the valuation. 
Mantis, if you could. Yeah, one second. Uh, so I, if I may start the, uh, the question, uh, so as we uh, discussed previously, we say that the Polish government has the largest stake in the company, and this definitely has a lot of impact, as we believe, in terms of their strategy and in terms of their main factor of evaluation, the dividend payout policy. We believe that it may, may or may not be affected by the current um, government budgeting plans, and et cetera. So we believe this is a risk, perhaps not maybe that obvious, but this is something that we see. And for the other shareholders? So other shareholders, uh, as you can see the list in the slide, uh, we have analyzed and saw some interesting um, and a little bit unexpected developments. So um, as for other holders, you can see that Aviva Group, which is one of the uh, industry competitors, holds uh, approximately 5% of shares. Um, there's also the National and Niederlanden OFE, uh, a, a fund which is part of Polish uh, second pillar pension system. And also among the top other five holders, we have uh, BlackRock and Vanguard, which are uh, large international management firms. Thank you very much for your contribution, for your presentation, and now it's time to relax. Thank you very much. Well, so that was Team K, and now Team M is coming. Team M. One, two, one, two. We are okay, ready. ready. Start. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Carol, and together with my colleagues Agata, Maciej, and Hubert, we came to recommend you an investment in PZU. We issue a buy recommendation with a target price of 49.16 Polish Lotus. Our recommendation is based on four main pillars. First of all, it's PZU's impregnable market dominance, supported by a growing economy. Secondly, it's an effective management strategy, creating a leading company and financial conglomerate in Central Eastern Europe, as well as it's covering several financial niches. Uh, another reason, it's innovative approach leading to improved cost efficiency. The last reason is outstanding compared to peers and sustainable ROE and margins achieved by our target. PZU's core business consists of four elements. First of all, it's insurance, banking, health, and investments. The the acquisition of Link4, the first company offering direct insurance in Poland in 2014, solidified the PZU's position as the company that, that con concerns the Polish in the insurance sector. Uh, the PZU's Apple in the eye is undoubtedly the banking sector. The company holds shares in two Polish banks, Alior and Pekao, thanks to the intensified m and thanks to the intensified m and uh, activities. Uh, its banking assets value has grown fourfold between 2016 and 2017. The company, the company binds high, ho high hopes on the health sector, and the, the, company's, uh, in, and the company's investment sector is the third largest player in Poland, and it offers a wide range of investment funds. Uh, the company proposes a range, a wide range of uh, a, a wide range of uh, offers, both for individuals and for the uh, and for the institutional clients. It is also uh, offered to it is also ready to offer them the assistance on every stage. The company operates within four 
uh, for uh, foreign markets. Apart from Poland, it operates in Ukraine and in the Baltic states, thanks to the acquisitions and to the organic growth. The company is a key player with an ample portfolio, serving 39% of Polish life insurance sector and 31% of Polish non-life insurance sector. It is also the second banking power in Poland. The non-life uh, non insurance sector in Poland is cyclical. This makes a third-party liability pro product a perfect opportunity for the companies who want to acquire the clients. It is also a tool to exploit the cross-selling opportunities. Continuing PZU strategy for 2020 includes 38% share in the non-life insurance market and 11 million clients in the life insurance segment. There are plenty of relatively small players in the market, so there's still potential for market consolidation. Talking about consolidation, PZU has an opportunistic approach to acquisitions. Its M&A criteria are simple. First, operating in the CE region, uh, second, top three on a given market, and third, uh, robust profit profitability assumptions. Going further, uh, M&A cr criteria can be considered a part of the PZU strategy, but more broadly speaking, it's based on four main areas. First, increasing cross-selling. Thanks to strategic partnerships, PZU plans to become a diversified financial group. Second, Focusing on customer service, PCU wants to communicate its offer effectively. Third, digitalization. PCU has enabled its clients, to give an example, investing in TFI PCU using a smartphone, and lastly, and most importantly, innovations. PCU wants to make use of AI, mobility, and data analysis. It wants to make much more effective use of data, both internally in processes and externally in offering to its clients. Talking about the data, clients sharing it will gain additional benefits, an example of which, of which is PZU Go, where a small beacon gathering real-time data from a car can detect an accident and protect both health and life of, of its clients. Talking about the health segment in PZU, PZU Zdrowie, it will be an important part of the incoming strategy. In 2020, it targets to achieve 1 billion of Polish lotis of revenue. PCU plans to become the number one player on the, health on the health market in Poland and because of strategic acquisitions and use of modern solutions. The state's treasury stake has a big impact on the PCU strategy. A long-term ruling government might have an impact on the stability of the management and execution of the assumed strategy. The high stake of the state treasury carries also some disadvantages. The most important political risk is the government's pressure on the acquisitions in the most important sector for the Polish economy, such as banking. However, our analysis proved that historically, PZU was very cautious when it comes to its acquisitions, and almost all of them brought in an added value to the group. Moving on to the problem of the private pension plans, so-called PPK. This new product was a game changer for the investment industry. The margins on this product are expected to run very low. Despite that, PZU has to make a market move, otherwise it would be a subject to a potential loss of the current client. We also acknowledge that the PZU's success is driven by the exceptionally high margins and effectiveness. PZU's strategy aims at, among others, cutting administrative costs. However, would, would the margin see to a decrease, it would bring on much lower valuation. When it comes to margin, PZU has one of the highest ROE when juxtaposed with its peers. And in the forecast, in the, we expect that in the forecast, this ROE will not only be sustained, but it will also increase slightly due to rising cost efficiency. Dividends are one of the most important part of the uh, PZU's relations with the investors. In the last couple of years, both dividend and dividend yield were on an outstanding level. Lastly, PZU also cares about the financial safety and regulations. The company maintains its solvency to ratio above 220%, and it is one of the highest industry. The same goes for the total capital ratio of Allior and Pekao. 
our targeted price is 49.16 per use lotus, which translates into a 22.2% upside. This value has been derived using three different methodologies. DCF and DDM valuation have rather a conservative approach of 11% cost of equity in a detailed 10 years forecast. Uh, by saying that, we decided to apply for these two valuation methods as much as 66% of weight because we consider income approach the most accurate way to evaluate the company. Moving on to the valuation, uh, multiples valuation, we have also applied a sum of the parts approach considering banking and insurance businesses separately. Uh, segment specific multiples for insurance, insurance based on gross return premiums and book value uh, were not selected by us due to high incomparability of really high fees use margins. So use of any other than P2E multiple uh, would uh, decrease the, the final valuation of the company. Mm, when it comes to valuation of banking segment, we decided to use an ROE linear regression against book value. We have also analyzed a scenario of M-Bank acquisition by PKO, and uh, amongst uh, possible implications, we identified there's a lot of space for potential synergies, as well as PZU Group could become the leading banking power in Poland. Moreover, we analyzed the past acquisitions of PZU, and uh, in most of the cases, it turned out that the company tend to not overpay for any of the acquired companies. And by saying that, we, we believe that uh, this potential deal uh, could bring either neutral or positive outcome for PZU investors. We strongly believe that PZU's leading dominant market position as well as effective strategy and business diversification, outstanding financial results, and being a pioneer in the area of technological and in te of technology will drive the market valuation up. And by saying that, we stand confident by our buy recommendation. Thank you for your attention, and now we are pleased to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For your performance, uh, relax for a second. Are you ready for take questions, right? Okay. Okay, so start. If I may, uh, so what macroeconomic trends factors have you considered, in particular, how the potential increase in interest rates will affect the valuation of the whole group and individual parts? Yeah, well, when it comes to interest rate, it's, it's, we, are mostly concerned about, yeah. we are mostly concerned about the uh, banking sector of the PZU, as the increasing interest rate would uh, rather definitely decrease the valuation of the banking part of the PZU's business. Why is that? Well, and, uh, when an increasing interest rate would affect the uh, number of the loans given, uh, so that would <coughs> uh, that would impact uh, the revenues of the banks. In case of PZU itself, Excuse me? in case of PZU itself, so you mentioned banking. What about the PZU? Well, banks are a part of the PZU group, but if we are talking about the insurance segment, uh, I, we, I don't think we see any uh, threats from the interest rate when it comes to the uh, insurance segment. Um, my question is with regard to the target valuation uh, and huge upside in the around over 20%. Uh, of the price. Uh, so, what is special that you that you found in the company that you value the company much higher than the market? The market were the no, dozens of analysts uh, and uh, players, uh, institutional players, uh, and why they are valuing uh, the company much lower than you. What's, what's the reason? Okay, so we consider PZU to be one of the most advanced, uh, especially in terms of technology, uh, financial company of the, on the Polish market and also on Central Eastern Europe market as well. Uh, and uh, we also believe that uh, a huge business diversification that we mentioned in our presentation uh, makes this company a more stable uh, to generate future revenues, which, which would stabilize in the future, but still generating much higher uh, revenues 
tips for the potential investors. And it's worth also mentioning that uh, currently Polish market is much, the saturation of this market when it comes to insurance business, the main part of PZU, is much lower than, for example, in Western European countries that we aspire to. Uh, according to PZU past report, uh, they analyzed that uh, in Western Europe countries, for example, uh, for the same amount of uh, GDP per capita, there's much lower share of gross written premiums per capita. So if we aspire higher and to closer the gap uh, between us and Western countries, we believe that the profitability of insurance business also can increase. And notwithstanding the health uh, sector uh, in which PZU also invests, and that is uh, growing rapidly in Poland, especially taking into consideration the current state of the uh, public uh, medical uh, services. I have a question regarding the uh, challenges uh, related to the banking sector. Uh, PZU is right, owns right now uh, PQ and Allior, and uh, you mentioned that uh, you see the potential acquisition of Hembanga, a very positive uh, uh, thing. So, um, can you tell me how uh, you see the challenges regarding the environment related to banking? Uh, do you see any uh, potential risks there that can affect uh, PZU right now and uh, in the current state and in the future after the acquisition, potential acquisition? Yes, of course. We uh, have to keep in mind that uh, PZU is uh, a state treasury company. And uh, in case of M-Bank takeover, there's, for example, a risk that uh, current clients would decide to leave the, the M-Bank as a service provider. Um, however, we see a lot of space for potential improvement, such as, for example, synergies possible within the group. Uh, it's worth mentioning that, for example, currently PZU and Allior uh, cooperate in terms of uh, giving loans to employees where PZU, for example, provides a base of customers for Allior and Allior provides its own innovative platform for giving this, uh, this, that kind of loans. And the uh, benefit of Allior is that the, this loan is insured by PZU and it has uh, an access to the client's base and at the same time, PZU Group at all uh, has a possibility to diversify even further their, their business operations. Only the positive uh, effect. No, of course, uh, as I mentioned before, there are some risks, but we believe that positive uh, probable outcomes are much, much higher than those negatives. Okay, one question about uh, the, uh, let's say, the, the growth engine. Let's say if you were to name one thing that uh, gives uh, you in the near future, few years, what would be the, the growth engine for PZU? What segment they are in would grow and contribute to the highest extent to, to getting to your target price? Okay, so considering the growth rate, I think the highest growth rate, I think even triple digit can be expected from the health sector as we, can, as we see a lot of acquisition in the sector. Uh, even in 2019, there were uh, many acquisitions, for example, of the FARC, so the sector of the uh, <coughs> of the private uh, public uh, private healthcare uh, is booming. But in terms, in nominal terms, I think the uh, the, in, the insurance industry will have the the highest uh, growth because it's the highest part of the uh, PZU's business, largest part. And by mentioning the health business, we have to keep in mind that uh, PZU managed to build its PZU health brand in only 10 years. And they started from the scratch. And in that time, they managed to get into top three. And they are aspiring to get into top one, to be the leader of the, of the market. And we think that's very important. Both in case of health and insurance, we have to think about the innovations which are very important in PZU Group. So, for example, in the insurance sector, we are talking about using AI in claim settlement or using um, AI applications in the TFI PZU. Uh, there is a specialist, Konrad Augustinski, who's leading the uh, quantitative team in TFI PZU. 
in case of health, we can think about a telemedicine or, as I've mentioned on the presentation, a PZU Go, which is a real innovation on in Polish health sector. Since you are mentioning TFI, do you think that the move uh, into the passive investments within PZU brand, uh, do you think it's uh, positive or uh, negative or maybe neutral move? Yeah, well, the, the research shows that uh, in the long term, uh, the passive investing might actually uh, bring higher results than the, the active investing. So considering that there will be probably a lot of inflow uh, considered from, uh, the PP, from the new PPK product, the move for the uh, passive investing might, be actually, uh, have, might have a positive impact in the long term. I have one question on the evaluation methods you use. Um, you use a 10-year horizon in DCF and the DDM, and there is one particular thing that interests me here. You showed that in the appendices that uh, you assumed a variable payout ratio uh, in the DDM model. Can you please elaborate more? How did you arrive at this? Um, so the range of payout ratio we applied is between about 75 and 85 percent. And by forecasting this future dividend payout, uh, we assumed that no large acquisition will happen because we had to keep in mind that, for example, when PZU acquired Pekao, there was uh, one off that uh, this dividend payout ratio was much lower than before. There also happened situations where payout ratio was even above 100%. Uh, so, so we decided just to stabilize, stabilize that in the future. But of course, if any large transaction uh, would happen, this payout uh, ratio could vary quite a lot. But it would be only one of situation. If, if we have still time. Uh, no? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much. Now it's time for you to relax. Uh, so that would be team, that would be team M, that was team R. Uh, One, two. One, one. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. You check your microphones. You check your presentation. One, two, three, when four. it starts, when you are ready, you just tell me. Ready? Ready? Start. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adam, and together with my teammates Piotr, Constante, and Błażej, we would like to present to you our recommendation of PZ2 Group, an absolute insurance leader and one of the biggest financial companies in our region. We issue by recommendation with target price 43.43 Polish Zloty, that makes 8% upside. The main drivers of our recommendations are regular and growing dividends paid by company, growth potential in insurance market, increasing bank's results in group's portfolio, and sustainable financial situation. Global, European, and Polish trends are slightly different. The main global challenges are increasing population, technological challenges, uh, <coughs> The of the society, climate change, and natural disasters. Yes. In Europe, these are the aging society and economic slowdown. In Poland, compared to average in Europe, have uh, twice as low percent of uh, premiums written as a percent of GDP. What's more, in Poland, uh, compared to other European countries, has significant GDP and society wealth growth which is an opportunity for insurance market to grow. 
Mesetu is currently implementing a new business model. It was necessary for such a complex structure of Mesetu, with all its subsidiaries, Link4, and minority shares in banks. The new model is focused on connecting its all activity into one model that is going to be an answer for all clients' needs. Moving to Pesa2 products, there are Pesa2 Go, which is a small device used in case of a road accident. My Pesa2, which is a modern website, in Pesa2 as an investment platform, and also Pesa2 Health, which is a child company that follows the newest trends in health and diagnostics. We also described several key characteristics of insurance market. These are high entry barriers, lack of insurance and also banking substitutes, competition on price and fit to the customer, and also having a huge database. When it comes to competitive positioning, PZU is by far the strong leader with over one third of insurance market share in Poland. It is selling 40% of life insurance, which is four times more than its closest competitor, Aviva. In non-life insurance, PZU covers 30% of the market share, whereas the biggest competitors, Ergo Hestia and Talanax, have 15.2 and 14.4% of the market share, respectively. After conducting row and price to book value analysis, we discovered that PZU, by lying on the top of the regression line, is well valued, and it has one of the best indicators in relation to its competitors. In banking segment, we noticed that both Alior and Pekao are slightly undervalued, which is one of the reasons why we issue by recommendation. The company operates in a very unusual sector. Uh, the number of sold uh, policies increases with uh, enrichment of society and the decreasing uh, inequalities. Therefore, and because of the large size of the company, we can assume that the future growth will be comparable to Polish Zloty inflation. After a decline in 2015 and 2016, EBIT margin returned to around 29%, and we predict the uh, same level in the future. Similarly stable situation concerns return on equity ratio, which is above 19%. <clears throat> uh, the warning fact about the company could be that despite increasing uh, policies and stable number of claims, uh, the number of people insured globally decreases annually. <clears throat> On the other hand, it's worth to notice that uh, in PZU, level of acquisition costs increases slower than revenues. When it comes to uh, cost of administrative administration, uh, there was even a decreased notice. This may be a result of three factors. Firstly, reduction of unemployment in past years, computerization and automatization of processes, which, may, uh, which have been funded in the recent years. When it comes to comparison to other companies, the margins, especially net margin, net profit margin in PZU is higher than average in sector. Uh, company, due to the large share of treasury state in the company, um, dividends have been and will be paid annually. The, in the 2018, the amount was 2.8 Polish zloty per share, and we predict that it will uh, go up to 3 Polish zloty per share. Coming to valuation, as you said earlier, we have issued buy recommendation with target price of 43.43 Polish zloty. Our valuation is based on two approaches dividend discount model and segment valuation consisted of three parts insurance part, Pekao Bank, and Alior Bank. We gave 50% weight to each approach. In the dividend discount model, we conducted three phase valuation, which we discounted by cost of equity from CAPM model. We used five year daily beta, 3% risk free rate, and 6.06% equity risk premium based on ratings. Additionally, in long term, we, we used adjusted beta according to the theory that in long term beta has to run. 
first phase covers 2020-2022 period period with deterred income and 75% of income paid in dividends. The second phase, we assumed that dividend yield will grow by 2% a year to the level of 89% and that the company will be in the period of stable growth with 2.5% growth rate. The third phase, we assume that dividend yield will uh, stay stable just below 90% and that the company will uh, remain in uh, stable growth, which is also Polish long-term inflation goal. Coming to segment valuation, we conducted uh, segment valuation consisted of three methods. Access return model, which is one of the best models for financial companies. Multiplier valuation using price to equity multiplier. And finally, price book value to row regression model for 2020 and 2021. We consider access return model the most important, so we gave it weight of 50%. And comparable valuation methods got 25% weight each. The biggest part of PZU, insurance, is worth 34.19 Polish zloty for one stock of PZU, and it is 81% of its target price. Uh, banking part of PZU is responsible for the remaining 90% of its value. Most of it is PECOSA with 6.6 .6 Polish zloty value per share and 109 Polish zloty target price. What's worth mentioning, the dividend discount model for this bank also confirmed, confirmed its undervaluation and its target price in the area of 110 for this lot. Finally, Allior SA uh, is responsible for just 4% of our target price, but we also see a uh, uh, field for the improvement. We also conducted Monte Carlo simulation for dividend discount model. After running 1,000 simulations, we observed 59% potential to grow and uh, a target price of 43.43 for this lottery. One cannot describe the insurance company without mentioning about risks. According to 2019 Global, global Risk Report by the World Economic Forum, uh, the three of five of the most probable and impactful risks are all bonded with environment. In 2018, as a result of natural disasters, PZ2 paid farmers uh, compensation in the amount of 200 28 million Polish zloty. Uh, another important group of risks are political ones. Due to high dependence of the management board to government, the board of directors is likely to change uh, along with the change of the ruling party. What's more, uh, the raise of the, the government's announcement of raise of the minimum wage can slightly affect the cost structure of employees in the PZ2 group companies. Despite, <clears throat> despite all of the mentioned risks, which were climate changes and politics, government uh, dependence, we believe that PZ2 has a stable finance situation, it pays high dividends, it is an absolute market leader, and our forecasts indicate constant growth. This results in given by recommendation Thank you for your time, and now we are pleased to answer your questions. Time for questions and answers, are you ready? Okay, yes, start. Um, I, would, I would like to uh, go back to your presentation uh, on the, you, you were mentioning about the risks uh, so, what's in your opinion the biggest threat for the company and how it may influence the valuation? So, one of the biggest threats may be the political ones because of the mentioned dependence on the government. The management board can uh, change along with the, uh, with the ruling party. And uh, the influence of the government can also lead to uh, to bad uh, acquisition, acquisitions uh, because of, for example, bank repolarization policy uh, in our government. Second big threat is also raising of interest rates, which will uh, influence banking, uh, neg which will, which will uh, negatively influence uh, banking valuation. I think the biggest threat uh, currently is massive panic, uh, which has resulted from coronavirus. 
and it's EOFO 2019. Uh, it is uh, now spreading uh, across the world. Uh, we got information that yesterday it, uh, it reached more than 200 um, infected people in Italy. And now, just um, a few minutes ago, we, we also read that it spread all also to Austria. So, so this is... Uh, it influenced negatively the market. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, but on the other uh, hand, this threat, uh, which is uh, combined with the share of government, uh, could be also considered as an opportunity because the government uh, will create a friendly opportunity to growth of this company. Okay. You've mentioned interest rate risk and the potential for interest rate increase. Mm -hmm. How will this move in interest rates, potential move, affect the results of the banks the insurance business and the overall valuation of the group? Uh, I think it can uh, negatively influence, it can negatively influence the valuation of the group due to uh, growing inflation, interest, uh, interest rates should or will be in the future, uh, they will rise in the future and banks will uh, give less credits, less mortgages, uh, prices of, uh, of houses will drop down uh, so the insurance uh, part will, uh, will be lower due to uh, lower value of uh, flats and banks also will be negatively affected by this due to less, uh, smaller credit action. Would an interest rate increase the interest revenue of the banks? Higher interest rate increase the interest we don't revenue? Think so. So you mentioned that uh, the banks are the main uh, uh, growth factor for the PCT, you, you, you put them on the pros side, but on the other hand you said that the political risks and the repolonization is, uh, is a risk. So can you elaborate how, how can you assess, how do you assess that? And you didn't mention anything about potential acquisition of M-Bank, so uh, could we come back uh, for a moment for for this? Of course, we perceive uh, Pekao as a good investment. Your bank, as you know, broke down and is still dropping uh, after the acquisition. It's, we think it's due to political factors which influenced uh, this acquisition. Also, uh, the founder of Alior left after after those acquisitions, and the company was half a year without. Uh, Mr. President, uh, from this management. Um, so we see an opportunity in PECO results rather than in either bank, but it also is it's slightly undervaluated. And uh, coming to uh, end bank acquisition, we think that uh, if the decision were, was made uh, on the economical factors, I think, and especially if it was merger with the PECO, it could have positive influence on the group due to synergy effect in the IT systems in growing uh, uh, number of clients uh, and also a scale effect. But uh, I think too much pressure for this can uh, can result in uh, overpaying for the uh, end bank and, and losses like uh, in the case of other banks. I think that I see another uh, risk in acquisition when it comes to acquisition with, uh, over M-Bank because uh, M-Bank has a lot of risky instruments in its portfolio and uh, we can predict that because of uh, political reasons there will be changes in, uh, in M-Bank management and we can assume that probably those outsiders will not be able to manage this risk so well as it's happening today. And one question to, to the slide where you show the forecast of the banking uh, on competitive portfolio uh, positioning. I think. Um, you said that the... Could you repeat because my friend didn't hear the question. Uh, the competitive positioning, and there is a slide with forecast uh, 21 for year 21, 22 for banking. Yes. Um, and I don't know if I heard well, but uh, 
you said that the buy recommendation is uh, mostly uh, due to the undervaluation of the banking assets of the PZU, okay. or I miss? Okay, so I, I, I hope to be misunderstood because this is one of the many reasons why we issue buy recommendation. And um, on the on the slide uh, where the PZU is well valued, uh, there is forecasts for 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. So nowadays, it it is it is undervaluated uh, due to our presentation. And adding to this banks undervaluation, it results in uh, by recommendation. So, in your opinion, the, the banks that are in the portfolio of PZU are undervalued. Yes, of course. Slightly. Yeah, slightly. It's just just below the, the regression line, but it, it's yeah. an addition. Thank you. Thank you. And you want to add that in this row, uh, in this regression model, uh, this confirms uh, our evaluation from, from this model because it was prognosis for 2020-2021. So if we counted uh, final price from from the regression model and PZU will be just perfectly on this line, we think we think that uh, it's behave like a market and if the market also says that it's and it's undervaluated, we agree with this. Question on um, evaluation method. On the dividend discount model, the slide you presented, you showed the assumptions and um, risk-free rate of 3%. How did you Linear, arrive? Linear uh, bond percentage. Bond Any interest rate. Polish government bonds? Yes. Okay. What will drive combined ratio in the past the most? What will drive combined ratio of PZU in the future the most? What would drive the combined ratio of PZU the most in the future? Is it the loss ratio, acquisition cost ratio, admin cost ratio? Which components in your view, in your, in your valuation model, have you assumed it will be be, will have the biggest impact on the future combined ratio. I think that uh, acquisition ratio may drop. And if there were no merger with the or acquisition with the M bank, it will jump. Thank you very much for your thank you very much, etc. And then. Please relax and new team comes. Thank you. Raz, dwa, trzy. Raz, raz. Raz. One, two, one, two. Raz, raz. Buy one insurance company, get two banks free. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bartek, and I'm today with my colleagues, Wojtek, Magda, Radek, and Dominik, and we are going to present our analysis and recommendation on PZU Group, the largest insurer in Poland and one of the biggest financial institutions in Central Eastern Europe. We will prove that despite complexity of financial conglomerate, it does work. We issue by recommendation with 12 months target price of 47.20 Elf Poly Zloty, representing almost 18% upside potential. 
PZU activity concentrates on non-life and life insurance in Poland with 20% of net profit coming from banking subsidiaries. The main segment of non-life insurance is motor, while in life insurance it's group and continued. PZU group is also present in Baltic countries and in Ukraine. Our recommendation is based on three pillars. First, dominant market position. Second, diversified growth strategy. And third, solid financial standing. It all leads to one conclusion. PZU has consistently delivered strong shareholder returns. And we believe that market currently undervalues PZU growth perspectives as well as future dividend payments. For 200 years of PZU activity, the group has been constantly evolving. But there is one thing that hasn't changed. And it's the fact that PZU is an distributable market leader on Polish insurance market. With 41 percentage market share in life insurance and 38 in non-life, the company enjoys the benefits of scale and wide brand recognition. In Western Europe, people spend seven times more on insurance compared to Central Europe especially on live products, whereas in our region, non-life segment dominates due to lower insurance awareness of the society. We believe that in long term, in Central Europe, there is, there is a chance for convergence to reach the Western Europe levels, resulting in upside potential for PZU. The company falls out well in comparison to its peers. On the insurance market, there is a trade-off between growth and profitability. As other insurance policies are perfect substitutes, an insurer can pick either to fight for the market share or operate at a higher level of underwriting margins. PZU managed to combine both, giving the company a unique position on the market. If you hear PZU, you think in risk free rate of 3%. How did you arrive? Uh, bond percentage. Bond Polish government bonds? Yes. Okay. What will drive combined ratio in the past the most? Repeat. What will drive combined ratio of PZU in the future the most? What would drive the combined ratio of PZU the most in the future? Is it the loss ratio, acquisition cost ratio, admin cost ratio? Which components in your view, in your, in your valuation model, have you assumed will, be, will, be, will have the biggest impact on the future combined ratio? I think that uh, acquisition ratio may drop. If there were no merger with the, or acquisition with the M bank, it will drop. Thank you very much for your thank you very much etc and then please relax and new team comes thank you. Raz, dwa, trzy. Raz, raz. Raz. One, two, one, two. Raz, raz. Buy one insurance company, get two banks free. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bartek, and I'm today with my colleagues, Wojtek, Magda, Radek, and Dominik, and we are going to present our analysis 
and recommendation on PZU Group, the largest insurer in Poland and one of the biggest financial institutions in Central Eastern Europe. We will prove that despite complexity of financial conglomerate, it does work. We issue by recommendation with 12 months target price of 47.20 elf point zloty, representing almost 18% upside potential. PZU activity concentrates on non-life and life insurance in Poland with 20% of net profit coming from banking subsidiaries. The main segment of non-life insurance is motor, where in life insurance is group and continuity. PZU group is also present in Baltic countries and in Ukraine. Our recommendation is based on three pillars. First, dominant market position. Second, diversified growth strategy. And third, solid financial standing. It all leads to one conclusion. PZU has consistently delivered strong shareholder returns. And we believe that market currently undervalues PZU growth perspectives as well as future dividend payments. Through 200 years of PZU activity, the group has been constantly evolving. But there is one thing that hasn't changed. And it's the fact that PZU is a distributable market leader on Polish insurance market. With 41 percentage market share in life insurance and 38 in non-life, the company enjoys the benefits of scale and wide brand recognition. In Western Europe, people spend seven times more on insurance compared to Central Europe, especially on life products, whereas in our region, non-life segment dominates due to lower insurance awareness of the society. We believe that in long term, in Central Europe, there is, there is a chance for convergence to reach the Western Europe levels, resulting in upside potential for PZU. The company falls out well in comparison to its peers. On the insurance market, there is a trade-off between growth and profitability, as other insurance policies are perfect substitutes an insurer can pick either to fight for the market share or operate at a higher level of underwriting margins. PZU managed to combine both, giving the company unique position on the market. If you hear PZU, you think insurance. However, the company wants to change this. According to its new strategy, it wants to be with their clients from birth to death. Therefore, it has been developing new complex ventures, such as PZU Health or Strategic Partnership Program with recognized financial institutions. PZU Health deals with the three types of efforts. First, it, size of health services, both in the form of insurance and non-insurance. Second, development of own medical infrastructure and third, development of innovative telemedicine solutions. Moving forward, I have a question. Do you need to pay high price for your insurance while you have never had any car accident? PZU will change this with the implementation of big database dynamic pricing and telematic systems. The company will customize their prices to their clients' profiles. With the insurance market's limited expansion potential, we believe the banking segment to be the main growth engine of the group. As a result, we expect that in 2023, the banking net contribution to net, in contribution to net income will reach as high as 26%. This is due to several reasons. First, we believe that the loans to GDP ratio will rebound slightly in the following years, resulting in credit market growth. And second, we think that PKO has potential to further increase its credit market share by shifting towards a slightly more aggressive approach, with its current cost of risk remaining one of the lowest in the sector. Last but not least, the group, the banking cooperation, resu results in enhanced cross-selling opportunities, such as bank assurance and Azure banking, as well as it allows for certain cost synergies. PZU has very healthy capital. It has recently optimized its capital, in recent years, its optimized capital structure with maintaining a very strong solvency to requirements, exceeding its peers and being top notch in Europe. Investing premiums, premiums is a very important part of business, of insurance business. 
It's increasingly challenging in the world of low or even negative interest rates, but PCU usually manages to achieve strong return. We assumed a moderate growth of gross return premium to reflect the high base effect as well as possible slowdown of Polish economy. PZU has very attractive margins, especially in life insurance, with its historically very profitable group, uh, group products. We assumed a, a slow, slow, moderate growth of net profit with increasing share of banking contribution and decreasing share of investment profit. Thanks to unparalleled domestic market share, above sector profitability in life insurance, as well as co combined ratio improvement, PZU boasts an outstanding return on equity when compared with its domestic rivals. Moreover, PZU is attractive also when compared with its European insurance peers, claiming the fourth largest ROE. We, we, we note that the acquisition of stakes in Allior and Pekao has allowed PZU to transform from an overcapitalized group to a financial conglomerate with more diversified risk, risk exposure. In addition, the leverage effect has allowed PZU to boost its combined return on equity when compared to the pure insurance ROE. PZU's solid financial standing, reflected in its healthy capitals, improving operating margins, as well as outstanding return on equity, has allowed for strong shareholder returns in the past. Assuming 70% dividend payout ratio, we expect this trend to continue and the dividend yield to reach 6.7% in 2023. Let's move to the valuation. In order to estimate potential price of PZU, we used both income approach with 80% weight and market approach with remaining 20% weight. As a result, we arrived with a price value of 47.28 Polish Zloty, which represents 18% upside. In the income approach, uh, we assumed 1.5% growth rate in the residual period, 7.8% cost of equity, and 70% dividend payout rate. We decided to value the group as a whole, as we believe it has unique risk profile and synergies due to the fact of being a financial conglomerate. In the discounted dividend valuation, we arrived with a price of 45.75 Polish Lotus. On the other hand, in the excess capital return valuation, we arrived with a price of 50.53 Polish Lotus. Uh, in the relative valuation, we divided activities of PZU into insurance and banking. In the insurance activity, we selected a wide group of European insurance companies and arrived with a price to earnings forward 2020 multiple of 11.8. In the banking activity, we selected a peer group of Polish publicly traded banks and arrived with a median multiple of 12.8, which translate, uh, translates to the price of 43.35 Polish lotus. Uh, moreover, uh, we cross-checked our valuation uh, with the sum of the parts valuation uh, we performed a sensitivity analysis and Monte Carlo simulation, which all support our buy recommendation. As a most threatening increase to PZU's operation, we have identified to be in interest rate downside movements, as they impact the PZU's on in a variety of ways. Firstly, in interest income in both banking and insurance segment, as well as on the level of required capital under Solna C2 regime. The company has been trying to mitigate that risk by further diversifying its revenue stream, as well as securing big part of the investment portfolio in bonds. To recap our investment thesis, we base our buying recommendation on three pillars. One, dominant market position. Two, diversified growth strategy and free, strong financial position. This is Peasant U, an insurance policy for strong shareholder returns. Thank you for your attention, and we are now open for your questions. Now, can we start? Yes. Sure. Yes, start. Okay, thank you. It looked more like selling the company, not uh, researching the company. But Still, um, can you say a few words about uh, potential M bank acquisition and influence on this? In, in your view, the, uh, the the banking assets are important uh, for the position and for the value of the company. How would potential acquisition of M bank would influence? Sure. 
Okay, so we have conducted a thorough analysis of potential MBAC acquisition. And according to current market news, we assume the most possible uh, scenario in which only PKO is still in play to acquire MBank. Uh, we assumed that PKO acquires 100% stake in MBank, uh, and the um, uh, Swiss franc credit portfolio is guaranteed by Commerzbank on a risk free basis. Um, based on uh, sensitivity analysis of the equity purchase price, which we uh, uh, diversified by the price to book value uh, multiple, um, PECA would have to raise uh, certain amount of capital to meet the regulatory requirements, which would, of course, result uh, impact the positive solvency to ratio. However, um, even though under certain cir circumstances, uh, the uh, M-Bank acquisition would be uh, dilutive for, uh, for the um, desert use earnings pressure, uh, we found that uh, it wouldn't uh, result in, um, it wouldn't negatively impact the ability to PZ, of PZU to, uh, to, to pay dividends to shareholders, which we believe is one of the most strengths of the company. Uh, and even if uh, M-Bank was to be acquired at the highest uh, multiple of 1.8 1, 1. times, uh, at which only you know, Gebhan Kshinowski currently trades, uh, PZU would still be able to, uh, to pay dividends. The, the, the influence would be positive or negative? Because I, I understand that the, the, the dividends can be at the same level, roughly, but uh, for the value of the company, it's probably not only dividends. So, how would you overall assess the, the influence? Mm -hmm. for them? All right, so we see M Bank acquisition as a chance um, because certain synergies uh, which can be acquired by PECAO will influence also ZU earnings uh, at the end. So we think that this uh, synergy's potential uh, will influence positively uh, the view my cap, my cap position. Um, my, my question is with regard to the, to the valuation um, and the upside which you are showing, 18%. Uh, so what's, uh, what's the reason behind uh, such a difference between the market and uh, your target valuation, assuming that not only you are analyzing, analyzing the company. All right, so we think that the market uh, underestimates uh, PZU growth potential. And we think that the market reflects only the, uh, the stability of the company, but underestimates the, the potential revenue growth coming, for example, from PZU Zdrowie, PZU Health, uh, which was described uh, before, as well as uh, potential synergies and exceeding those synergies with bank. So we think that uh, the market underestimates those factors. Additionally, I would like to add that we believe that uh, many analytics uh, still perceive uh, EZU as old-fashioned insurer, as, uh, and as we showed, uh, the company wants to uh, transform and develop uh, many new segments so it do doesn't want to be just an insurer. Uh, and uh, additional question. Uh, what's uh, your assessment of the company approach to uh, new technologies and the approach of the company? Uh, as we know, Pesity is not buying too much uh, startups. Uh, so what's your assessment of, uh, 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 in this area? So, in, my, in our opinion, uh, we believe that uh, PZU is, uh, is developing in that uh, segment. We can see that uh, on the website of PZU, now you can buy almost uh, all types of insurance, uh, and uh, two or three years ago, it wasn't so easy. So, we can see the uh, significant progress in uh, that, uh, in that uh, thing, uh, and uh, also uh, PZU uh, cooperates 
uh, with some startups. It will wants to support its activity. So we can see that uh, the company seeks for further uh, improvement on that field. You've mentioned that in your presentation, but I wanted to add follow up a question on the impact of the increase in interest rates on the banks and the insurance operations. What will be the impact? And the second question, your assumptions regarding the combined ratio. What will it drive in the future? What, what factors will drive the combined ratio? Okay, if I may start by saying what the, is the impact of interest rates on the insurer's activity. As we know, the insurer uh, uh, invests the premiums it earns. So it is a big part of uh, company profits uh, comes from investments. So we believe that adverse interest rate movements will impact uh, poorly PZU's net profit. However, PZU has a strong uh, investment uh, portfolio, as for example in 20-year government bonds, which will expire only in 10 years. Therefore, it is able to secure still a big part of investment profits with a stable income. The increase of, in of increase in interest rates, how will it affect the insurance and the banking operations? Oh, so the interest in, uh, in increase increase in increase in interest rates uh, on the insurer front will positively impact the positive operation as it will, for example, decrease the level of required capital, therefore, furthermore, increasing capital safety of PESITU. And uh, when it comes to banks, uh, if uh, interest rate uh, increase, it will have positive impact on the activity of banks as uh, usually with uh, higher interest years, interest rates, banks are able to earn uh, slightly more uh, than, when on, well, than when interest rates are low. And of course, the other effect of uh, higher interest rates is the higher cost of capital. So, it would, it, so to sum up, it would negatively impact the, uh, the only valuations that are as variables of uh, both PZU and banks, but it would positively impact the uh, the earnings of banks and PZU. When it comes to the question about combined ratio, uh, we decided to uh, set on the steady level the uh, claims ratio, because it's hard to predict what will be the claims ratio in the future. When it comes to the administrative costs, uh, we, uh, we set them on the same level as in the history, history. although I think we think that it may be a conservative uh, assumption. Uh, because uh, PZU modernizes, PZU uh, introduces new uh, new technologies, and this, those costs actually might uh, uh, fall. And acquisition costs, we uh, we think they will stay on the same uh, same level. You mentioned in your presentation strategic partnerships with recognized institutions. Uh, can you please uh, elaborate more how do you see it will affect the company's operation? Uh, yes, so. Uh, the key partner uh, of PZU is Goldman Sachs and uh, recently the company announced uh, that it wants to create an index of uh, CEE region uh, that will be operated by uh, PZU and it will be offered uh, by Goldman Sachs to their clients. Additionally, uh, the company wants to improve, uh, I mean PZU wants to improve its asset management uh, due to cooperation with uh, Goldman Sachs. Uh, and when it comes to other entities, like for example Allegro or, or Lot, uh, it is uh, the sales of uh, insurance, for example, when uh, one individual is uh, doing shopping or uh, travel insurance when it comes to Allegro. And uh, speaking about electricity providers, it's the service of quick home repairs. If we have any problems for it's the service also for clients of this entity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now you can have a relax.
That's us. Okay. Hello, hello. Hello. Check, check. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're looking for alpha in no interest environment, you consider two things, growth or dividend. We have the perfect solution. PZU, the largest insuring company that combines both. That is why we issued a buy recommendation with 19% upside, reaching the target price of 47.8 Polish water. Our recommendation is based on four key drivers, surpassing macro trends, Leveraging scale advantage, effective capital management, and valuation that yields high upside. Cars, property, investment, and healthcare. What do these things have in common? Is it you? A diversified financial conglomerate that offers a wide range of products to suit clients' needs in crucial areas of, poly of private, public, and economic life. With insurance as its core and having undisputed lead in Poland, PZU also controls two out of 10 top Polish banks. Investment segment combines managing PZU assets and external funds. Healthcare is the fastest developing sector where PZU leads in the early consolidation phase. PZU is controlled by the state treasury. It is one of the leading financial group in CEE region. It has second largest market cap on the Warsaw Stock Exchange and serves 22 million customers. Now, let us walk you through our key valuation drivers, starting with surpassing market macro trends. PCDU operates in a favorable environment. Strong economy drives disposable income and people are buying cars and real estate, which drives the insurance and mortgage loans. And yet, Polish financial markets have still a lot of room to grow as they are lagging behind the EU average in both insurance penetration and domestic credit to GDP. On top of that, PZU has been outperforming the market. We identified three key drivers that stand behind this success. PZU is price resilience, has the largest distribution network with digital excellence and has very strong brand recognition. To sum up, strong economy together with growing penetration of financial services will favor PZU. The company with its competitive advantages will be able to fully leverage on those trends. PZU has undisputed dominant position on the Polish insurance market. It is outperforming its competitors, and we forecast this trend to continue. Along with its rapid growth, PZU was able to maintain its operational excellence expressed in lower than market combined ratio. In the non-life, PZU has achieved growth of almost 40%. In the life segment, segment, where many of the market players lost their profitability and market share, PZU grew its market share and kept its impressive margins at the level of over 20%. PZU controls two banks, a PKO, a major mortgage and corporate focus bank, and Alior, a digital challenger, with its focus on more affluent customers providing higher margin. Neither of these banks have significant forex mortgage portfolio that have recently become an issue for the banking sector. The complementary characteristics of these two banks are perfectly supporting PZU's bank assurance strategies. Bank assurance, British insurance, and banking segments. As it is, it is an ability to offer directly its products to PECA or Alior customers. It's a great competitive advantage of PZU. As it already has allowed to increase the bank assurance customers' numbers by almost four times in just one year. However, market may underestimate these this synergies where we see significant space to grow. The aging population creates a demand for quality healthcare, while public system is unable to meet it. This creates a natural, a great opportunity for private healthcare providers. In the past few years, PZU has acquired many locally focused players, securing itself the third position on the Polish healthcare market. And 
we forecast the market to consolidate further as PZU have ambitious plans on expansion. We believe that outperforming the market and leveraging its scale advantages in both insurance and banking will translate into PZU's excellent financial performance. And PZU have superior profitability with ROE over 21% is by far more profitable insurance company on the market. And we, ex we expect ROE expansion due to revenue growth and cost discipline. We believe PZU is able to deliver increasing revenue due to, as we uh, identified key drivers in all of the segments, non-life insurance, banking, and healthcare. On top of that, PZU is outperforming the market on the cost side. PZU cost leadership position is supported by scale advantage and innovations, unique distribution network, and effective underwriting. At the same time, we expect PZU to meet solvency to capital requirements with a high safety margin. This will translate into dividends and high capital position. The S&P rating also confirms PZU excellent financial position. And as profitability increases and capital requirements are fulfilled, we expect PZU to increase its dividend per share payout. This will translate into high dividend yield that will be attractive to investors and provide quality shareholder return. And these two factors will drive our valuation. We valued PZU using three different methods. Dividend discount model, some of the parts and that evaluation. We put 50% weight on the dividend discount model to emphasize the consolidated level view. We also use SOTP and ROT evaluation as supportive valuations that I weighted equally. We arrive at target price uh, that yields 90% upside. We apply 10-year DDM model with floating cost of equity. The beta is based on the regression of the PZU and WIC. The payout ratio is constant and is, it is in line with dividend policy. Terminal growth rate that we applied is 2%. For some of the parts valuation, we calculated each company value separately. Intrinsic value of the company implies that the PZU is, is undervalued as a standalone company. We believe that the market is under, underestimating PZU as an insurance company. To select our peers, we applied key criteria. All of the peers are regulated under Solvency II regulation. They are similar, similar in size of market capitalization, assets, and equity, and they have similar financial leverage. We divided peers into two groups due to significant uh, different char characteristics of those segments and PZU insurance mix. PZU trades an unwarranted price to earning discount because as we believe, market is less positive about PZU earnings growth potential. We applied both multipliers weighted equally and arrived at rate right evaluation target price. Our base case scenario can be boosted by further upside from potential acquisition of MBank. Acquiring MBank by PKO would move it to number one bank in Poland. The merger could create cost synergies driven by optimization of distribution network and IT infrastructure. These synergies would cover the cost of acquisition premium and cost of integration within three years of transaction. Successful M&A would increase the upside to 37%, which is reflected in our blue sky scenario. Our gray sky scenario with 6% downside accommodates four key risks. Political influence, economic slowdown, escalation of FX mortgage issue, and climate risk. Politically driven decisions can have major impact on PZU business. Company mitigates this risk with strict corporate governance. Based on conducted ESG scoring, we believe that high ESG performance reduces exposure to this risk. And as you can clearly see, investing in PZU is an insurance policy for your portfolio high return. Thank you, and we are open for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, if you are ready for questions, right? Okay, start. Thank you. Um, you predict higher dividend yield and uh, at the same time 
acquisitions and uh, growth in the healthcare and innovation. How would the company, in your opinion, uh, combine those two trends uh, and, and still be valued, as you say? Yeah, we apply 70% payout ratio throughout our forecast period, and the remaining 30% of profit will could be used to be active in M&A strategy in healthcare segment and also in, invest in innovations, as PDT has done already. This is enough. The, 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 the money that, left, that is left in the company is enough for the acquisition and uh, keeping the, the ratios? We believe yes, because in the healthcare segment, PZU was engaged in acquiring smaller players, locally focused. It was, until now, it wasn't uh, engaged in any large-scale acquisition, and PZU does not uh, disclose any plans to do so in the near future. Also, Polish pr private healthcare market is highly diver diversified, so it's hard to find a strong player that will need more capital than PZU already has. And one more question about M-Bank and synergies. Uh, do you think uh, state ownership and uh, political kind of involvement can influence the, the ability to extract those synergies that you see in uh, M-Bank acquisition? Sure. Uh, in the banking sector, we can see that we are at the closing uh, of last phase of consolidation. We can see clear relation between performance measured by ROE and assets. And as, for example, PKO uh, is a state-owned bank, the number one bank in Poland, it, because of its size, is able to have better performance, so we don't see this as an obstacle to uh, performance of uh, PKO and M bank combined. Uh, we can see that uh, moving to number one position in Poland would uh, create substantial synergies on distribution network, IT infrastructure, especially on IT infrastructure as M bank is known for its digital excellence, which could be a, a huge upside for PKO, uh, and also uh, provide uh, synergies which are not very. Uh, uh, are not very sensitive to, to political decisions. Okay, one tricky question. Uh, what, uh, um, uh, the, what is the main threat uh, and what's the main challenge for the company? We believe the main threat to the company will be political influence. And as we said, the company mitigates the risk with strict corporate governance. But we cannot exclude in involving PZU in some kind of political uh, projects, like investing in a coal burning, uh, coal burning mine. And the biggest challenge for PZU, it will be staying relevant in size, as it is now, and keep innovating, being ahead of competition, as they are smaller and more agile in some uh, ways. What assumptions have you made with respect to interest rates and how the potential increase in interest rate will affect the valuation and the results of the group and individual parts of the group, so insurance, banking? We assume flat interest rate throughout our forecast period as we cannot predict perfectly how it will change. But we will see that due to raising inflation, it might change. For the PZU, is diversified between insurance and banking, and they are counter-cyclical to the interest rate risk. As interest rate will rise, the PZU will benefit from banking uh, insurance margin and slightly decrease its profits from insurance as investment income will decrease. Why would the investment income decrease when the interest rates increase? Basically, once the interest rates increase, more customers tend to move to the financial market and not invest for, for insurance policies as they see uh, more attractive returns on, on the market. How will it affect the valuation? The change in interest rate will not uh, impact our valuation in a very material way. As we can see, PZU is able to deliver also revenue growth and stay profitable in the long term. One follow-up question on the mm, mm, 
valuation method you used. Uh, so a few seconds ago, you said that you assumed uh, flat interest rates. In the appendix, it, the documents we have in front of us, in the uh, um, APM model, you assumed increasing interest rates. So can you please uh, You mean that the, co more? the cost of equity is yes, increasing in yes, the years to but come? You, you assumed we assumed uh, in increasing the risk-free rate. Yes. Um, we assumed the cost of equity that increased because of the inflation adjustment. The, in, the inflation uh, rate is now at, in Poland at the higher rate, and we believe that uh, keeping, uh, keeping the interest rates on the flat level uh, as it is now uh, will, will uh, be, um, the inflation will be uh, at the um, more, than, uh, histor more than historically. Because historically, uh, the historic average of the 10 year is 1.8%. Uh, you, ass you assume increase in combined ratio. So what is the, what will drive the increase in combined ratio and what is, what are the key risks in the combined ratios in the future? So uh, in combined ratio, especially in motor, it's inflation in prices, definitely. And, of course, uh, the risks like uh, in life insurance, uh, when, for example, coronavirus will come to Poland, then more people will die, and then, uh, of course, core would go up. Inflation, in what sense, inflation of prices? Inflation, for example, of car parts, when, uh, for example, we have to, the, the insurer would have to pay more for the, uh, for the car repair. Thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much. Actually, you can stay here now because you were the last presenters and we will wait for the other teams and the, our judges will go for a short while to special room for deliberation. And then, you know, after this, there will be, if you wish, there will be announcement of results. But if you don't want, well, we can send by mail, of course. Well, it's up to you. <laughs>
So, so look, uh, I, 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 had a, I, I had a thought about what to say, uh, whether to be bullish or bearish, and as you may have seen on charts today, it's not a particularly bullish day, so I'm going to be a humor dampener here. All those uh, six or seven, 16 were in the final. Uh, I really enjoyed reading that. There were some other teams who were less enjoyable, but, but this was very good. Now, there is a problem, though, because... I mean, I work in a brokerage, I manage money, uh, well, I got a team that manages money, we get such reports all the time, and I must say that most of those reports you could just send and sign it as a PKO Dom Maklewski and it'd be fine. Very good. It's just a problem that you need to think about is whether you are not putting yourself in the shoes of a taxi driver who knows perfectly where, where, which street is which in Warsaw, and we have Google Maps for that at the moment, because nobody cares about valuations. Nobody cares about valuation. It's about the flow, it's about who's going to do what, and I will give you one example from the market recently. One of the most hated companies uh, on the planet for the last several years has been Tesla. Uh, Tesla, over the last several months, uh, has increased in price three times or something like that, even though it was still hated. It's not like three months ago we discovered that Tesla is the greatest thing since sliced bread. What happened? Six or seven months ago, the amount of shorts in the market, short sellers, was so huge that just the spark led to massive buying of Tesla, which went down to $900 from something like 250 Did fundamentals change? No. Did valuations change? Not really. It went up threefold. We have examples in other directions. So as much as valuation guides you and is good to have, and I really enjoyed reading most of those reports, just be cognizant of the fact that fewer and fewer people will care about this, sadly. And, uh, and the last thing I wanted to say, because uh, I happen to be working at M-Bank, uh, which, <laughs> which, was, which was interesting. Uh, and uh, so I was particularly keen to see how you guys see the potential takeover. I have my views on this, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and on behalf of MBank, I would like to thank all of you, all the six teams who thought that this was the spectacular, the most spectacular opportunity that PZU group has ever had. And it's not <laughs> me endorsing that strategy or not, I'm just saying that uh, even though the event is about PZU, I think all of the teams were particularly bullish on MBank. And on that note, uh, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I, I, I'm still a little bit of, still positive about the valuation. There are, there are at least two guys they care about valuation. Mr. Warren Buffett and Mr. Charlie Munger. 89 years and 96 years old. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, I'm not saying about underperforming, but I'm saying about using valuation. That's the other story. Okay, so our great thanks now goes to people who prepared you for these great reports. So your faculty advisors and mentors. Faculty advisor pick up the team, so it's coach-like, and the mentors help you probably in, in, in providing, in, in delivering report in sense, using, reading what you, what, you, what you wrote and maybe showing what is good and what is bad. So I would like to read the names and whoever is here, please come to the stage. Faculty advisor Dmitry Katkov, CFA. Dr. Piotr Sapiewski, CFA. Uh, Julia Kavalenka. Uh, Dr. Marek Panfil. <laughs> Professor Tomasz Słoński. Dr. Jerzy Dzieża. Dr. Michał Buszko. Dr. Adam Marszk. Okay. Um, Professor Natalia Leis or Latze from <laughs> Dr. Agata Kocia, Dr. Andrzej Rutkowski. He was before, but he had to leave. Uh, Dr. Eva Javgo, <laughs> Professor Eva Dziwok, Dr. Anna Golec, Dr. Marcin Bartkowiak. Uh, Professor Katarzyna Perez, Michał Hendrik, 
Doktor Demonte Teresiene. Doktor Tomasz Kasprowicz. Profesor Tomoyuki Hashimoto. Doktor Ewa Brence. I doktor Monika Bolek. Thanks a lot, congratulations. And I now I ask also mentors to join you at the stage. Ryszard Miodoński, CFA. Marika Lach, CFA. Joanna Kwiatkowska, CFA. Grzegorz Półkotycki, CFA. Piotr Polanowski, CFA. Member of our board of CFA Society Poland. Julia Bistrowa, CFA. She's driving force in, in, in society, in coming society in Latvia. Łukasz Wójcik. Olga Kalicińska, CFA. Artur Iwański, CFA. Damian Tracz, CFA. USB. Olaf Hofses, CFA. Piotr Domański, CFA. Kamil Żyzga, CFA. Okay, great. First mentor. <laughs> Grze Grzegorz Rostkowski. <laughs> Michał Szemraj, CFA. Przemysław Globalny, CFA. Maciej Bałabanow, CFA. Milena Olszewska, CFA. Grzegorz, Grzegorz Jajuga, CFA. Mariusz Słowikowski. Przemysław Barankiewicz, CFA, member of the board. Christian Kula, CFA. Robert Polański. Maciej Kowalczyk, CFA. Ok, so. And now this is the last part, unless you don't want to have this one, but I would like to invite to the stage Tomek Ochrymowicz, CFA, uh, Robert Zima, CFA, our partners, our sponsors. Uh, Um, the bad news is that only one team goes to the final, the regional final. Sorry. But as I said, maybe it's also good news because when we sent two teams, they didn't go to the final. So maybe one team would be, would be successful. And there is one team in here. Uh, also, there, is, there are financial prices. First place is 10K PLN. Second place is 5K PLN and the third place is 3K PLN, and this comes from Deloitte. Thank you very much for your generosity. <laughs> and now, now we go to results. We start from the place number six. The place number six goes to Team R, that's Wrocław University of Economics and Business. Congratulations. 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 And then we have. Thank you very much. Again. So, again, congratulations. We'll come, you'll come to the stage later on for the global photo, probably, but thank you very much.
the place number five goes to the team K, which is ISM, Lithuania, Vilnius. And I'm glad that uh, Lithuanian team is progressing and then, you know, actually we do hope that in near future there will be CFA Society Lithuania uh, and it's coming in this direction as I understand. Thank you very much. <laughs> Place number four. Team M, Warsaw School of Economics. Thank you very much. Uh, now we are coming to the place number three. This is the first place in terms of getting financial prize, but also we have these uh, special statuettes. And so team number three, third place is team N, Kosminski University. So this is bronze medal. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay. Now I would like to ask to come to the stage the remaining two teams, which is Team P from uh, Kozminski and Team O from Warsaw School of Economics. Uh, I, I will soon give you the final result. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, Competition, as usually, it was very, very tough. So, you know, well, if there is like 1,000 points, 500 points from a report and 500 points from, 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 from presentation, so the difference is not too high. We have one year we had a difference, that was several years ago, when the winning team had two points more than second team out of the 1,000. This time was not that bad, but uh, okay. So there was great performance. I know that you like each other. Mm -hmm. There'll be no hate after this because remember there was the, the, when there was the sports masters ceremony and they put also two guys in the, in the podium, Mr. the guy from Speedway and the guy from football, from soccer, and then, then this, these fans, they were starting to hate after this. This is not the case here. So, um, place number two is Team P, Kozminski University. <laughs> and and place, place number one, place number one is Team O, Warsaw School of Economics. Congratulations.
Uh, now for a short while winning team only and then we'll have photos of, of all teams right I think that these teams, all teams, that I strongly encourage you to, because your potential is extremely high, just go for CFA exam. Maybe some of you already registered, I don't know, but, but you know, I strongly advise this. I have to mention that um, several Polish universities, they they give uh, scholarships for CFA, those affiliated universities, and I think that, uh, as I understand also, Warsaw School Economics will become very, very soon, Kozminski, Wrocław, and some other universities, they can award scholarships for students, which substantially decrease the cost of exam. In addition, you can apply for exam on the country level, so-called um, access scholarship, where you have to log in on the website, and then I think from uh, April to to August, you should submit the application. Okay. And as I mentioned, from 2021, uh, level one goes on the computer-based testing, which is something new. Now I would like to ask all teams to the stage, mentors, graders, faculty advisors, everybody. Risk-free rate of three percent. How did you arrive? Uh, bond Any other Polish government bonds? Yes. Okay. What will drive combined ratio in the past the most? Repeat. What will drive combined ratio of PZU in the future the most? What would drive the combined ratio? of PZ2 the most in the future? Is it the loss ratio, acquisition cost ratio, admin cost ratio? Which components in your view, in your, in your valuation model have you assumed will, be, will, be, will have the biggest impact on the future combined ratio? I think that uh, acquisition ratio may drop. And since there were no merger with the, or acquisition with the M bank, it will drop. Thank you very much for your thank you very much etc and then please relax and new team comes thank you Raz, dwa, trzy. Raz, raz. 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 
Want to, want to. Raz, raz. Buy one insurance company, get two banks free. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bartek, and I'm today with my colleagues, Wojtek, Magda, Radek, and Dominik, and we are going to present our analysis and recommendation on PZU Group, the largest insurer in Poland and one of the biggest financial institutions in Central Eastern Europe. We will prove that despite complexity of financial conglomerate, it does work. We issue by recommendation with 12 months target price of 47.20 elf poly zloty, representing almost 18% upside potential. PZU activity concentrates on non-life and life insurance in Poland with 20% of net profit coming from banking subsidiaries. The main segment of non-life insurance is motor, where in life insurance is group and continuity. PZU Group is also present in Baltic countries and in Ukraine. Our recommendation is based on three pillars. First, dominant market position. Second, diversified growth strategy. And third, solid financial standing. It all leads to one conclusion. PZU has consistently delivered strong shareholder returns. And we believe that market currently undervalues PZU growth perspectives as well as future dividend payments. Through 200 years of PZU activity, the group has been constantly evolving. But there is one thing that hasn't changed. And it's the fact that PZU is a distributable market leader on Polish insurance market. With 41 percentage market share in life insurance and 38 in non-life, the company enjoys the benefits of scale and wide brand recognition. In Western Europe, people spend seven times more on insurance compared to Central Europe, especially on life products, whereas in our region, non-life segment dominates due to lower insurance awareness of the society. We believe that in long term, in Central Europe, there is, there is a chance for convergence to reach the Western Europe levels, resulting in upside potential for PZU. The company falls out well in comparison to its peers. On the insurance market, there is a trade-off between growth and profitability, as other insurance policies are perfect substitutes an insurer can pick, either to fight for the market share or operate at a higher level of underwriting margins. PZU managed to combine both, giving the company unique position on the market. If you hear PZU, you think insurance. However, the company wants to change this. According to its new strategy, it wants to be with their clients from birth to death. Therefore, it has been developing new complex ventures, such as PZU Health or Strategic Partnership Program with recognized financial institutions. PZU Health deals with the three types of efforts. First, it, sales of health services, both in the form of insurance and non-insurance. Second, development of own medical infrastructure. And third, development of innovative telemedicine solutions. Moving forward, I have a question. Do you need to pay high price for your insurance while you have never had any car accident? PZU will change this with the implementation of big database dynamic pricing and telematics systems. The company will customize their prices to their clients profiles. With the insurance market's limited expansion potential, we believe the banking segment to be the main growth engine of the group. As a result, we expect that in 2023, the banking net contribution to net, in contribution to net income will reach as high as 26%. This is due to several reasons. First, we believe that the loans to GDP ratio will rebound slightly in the following years, resulting in credit market growth. And second, we think that PKO has potential to further increase its credit market share by shifting towards a slightly more aggressive approach 
with its current cost of risk remaining one of the lowest in the sector. Last but not least, the group, the banking cooperation, resu results in enhanced cross-selling opportunities, such as bank assurance and Azure banking, as well as it allows for certain cost synergies. PZU has very healthy capital. It has recently optimized its capital, recently years, its optimized capital structure with maintaining a very strong solvency to requirements, exceeding its peers and being top notch in Europe. Investing premiums, premiums is a very important part of business, of insurance business. It's increasingly challenging in the world of low or even negative interest rates, but PCU usually manages to achieve strong return. We assumed a moderate growth of gross return premium to reflect the high base effect as well as possible slowdown of Polish economy. PZU has very attractive margins, especially in life insurance, with its historically very profitable group, uh, group products. We assumed a, a slow, slow, moderate growth of net profit with increasing share of banking contribution and decreasing share of investment profit. Thanks to unparalleled domestic market share, above sector profitability in life insurance, as well as co combined ratio improvement, PZU boasts an outstanding return on equity when compared with its domestic rivals. Moreover, PZU is attractive also when compared with its European insurance peers, claiming the fourth largest ROE. We, we, we note that the acquisition of stakes in Allior and Pekao has allowed PZU to transform from an overcapitalized group to a financial conglomerate with more diversified risk, risk exposure. In addition, the leverage effect has allowed PZU to boost its combined return on equity when compared to the pure insurance ROE. PZU's solid financial standing, reflected in its healthy capitals, improving operating margins, as well as outstanding return on equity, has allowed for strong shareholder returns in the past. Assuming 70% dividend payout ratio, we expect this trend to continue and the dividend yield to reach 6.7% in 2023. Let's move to the valuation. In order to estimate potential price of PZU, we used both income approach with 80% weight and market approach with remaining 20% weight. As a result, we arrived with a price value of 47.28 Polish Zloty, which represents 18% upside. In the income approach, uh, we assumed 1.5% growth rate in the residual period, 7.8% cost of equity, and 70% dividend payout rate. We decided to value the group as a whole, as we believe it has unique risk profile and synergies due to the fact of being a financial conglomerate. In the discounted dividend valuation, we arrived with a price of 45.75 Polish Lotus. On the other hand, in the excess capital return valuation, we arrived with a price of 50.53 Polish Lotus. Uh, in the relative valuation, we divided activities of PZU into insurance and banking. In the insurance activity, we selected a wide group of European insurance companies and arrived with a price to earnings forward 2020 multiple of 11.8. In the banking activity, we selected a peer group of Polish publicly traded banks and arrived with a median multiple of 12.8, which translate translates to the price of 43.35 Polish Lotus. Uh, moreover, uh, we cross-checked our valuation uh, with the sum of the parts valuation. Uh, we performed a sensitivity analysis and Monte Carlo simulation, which all support our buy recommendation. As a most threatening risk to PZU's operation, we have identified to be in interest rate downside movements as they impact the PZT use on in a variety of ways. Firstly, in interest income in both banking and insurance segment, as well as on the level of required capital under solvency to regime. The company has been trying to mitigate that risk by further diversifying its revenue stream, as well as securing big part of investment portfolio in bonds. To recap our investment thesis, we base our buying recommendation on three pillars. One, dominant market position. Two, diversified growth strategy. And three, strong financial position. This is PZU, an insurance policy for strong shareholder returns.
Thank you for your attention, and we are now open for your questions. Now, can we start? Yes. Sure. Yes, start. Okay, thank you. It looked more like selling the company, not uh, researching the company, but still. Um, can you say a few words about uh, potential M bank acquisition and influence on this? In your view, the, uh, the, the banking assets are important. Uh, for the position and for the value of the company, how would potential acquisition of M-Bank would influence? Sure. Okay, so we have conducted a uh, thorough analysis of potential M-Bank acquisition, and according to current market news, we assume the most possible uh, scenario in which only PKO is still in play to acquire M-Bank. Uh, we assumed that PKO acquires 100% stake in M-Bank, uh, and the um, uh, Swiss franc credit portfolio is guaranteed by Commerzbank on a risk-free basis. Um, based on uh, sensitivity analysis of the equity purchase price, which we uh, uh, diversified by the price-to-book value uh, multiple, um, PECA would have to raise a certain amount of capital to meet the regulatory requirements, which would, of course, result uh, impact the PDTU solvency to ratio. However, um, even though under certain cir circumstances uh, the uh, M-Bank acquisition would be uh, dilutive for, uh, for the um, PDTU's earnings pressure, uh, we found that uh, it wouldn't uh, result in um, it wouldn't negatively impact the ability to visit, of PZU to, uh, to, to pay dividends to shareholders, which we believe is one of the most strengths of the company. Uh, and even if uh, M-Bank was to be acquired at the highest uh, multiple of 1.8 1, 1. times, uh, at which only uh, Gebhan Kishinowski currently trades, uh, PZU would still be able to, uh, to pay dividends. The, the, the influence would be positive or negative? Because I, I understand that the, the, the dividends can be at the same level roughly, but uh, for the value of the company, it's probably not only dividends, so how would you overall assess the, the influence? Mm -hmm. for them? All right, so we see M-Bank acquisition as a chance um, because certain synergies uh, which can be acquired by PKO will influence also PZU earnings uh, at the end. So we think that this uh, synergies potential uh, will influence positively uh, PZU market, market position. Um, my, my question is with regard to the, to the valuation um, and the upside which you are showing, 18%. Uh, so, what's uh, what's the reason behind uh, such a difference between the market and uh, your target valuation, assuming that not only you are analyzing analyzing the company? All right. So we think that the market uh, underestimates uh, PZU growth potential, and we think that the market reflects only the uh, the stability of the company but underestimates the, the potential revenue growth coming, for example, from PZU Zdrowie, PZU Health, uh, which was described uh, before, as well as uh, potential synergies and exceeding those synergies with bank. So we think that uh, the market underestimates those factors. Additionally, I would like to add that we believe that uh, many analytics uh, still perceive uh, PZU as old-fashioned insurer, as, uh, and as we showed, uh, the company wants to uh, transform and develop uh, many new segments, so it do doesn't want to be just an insurer. Uh, and uh, additional question, uh, what's uh, your assessment of the company approach to uh, new technologies and the approach of the company? Uh, as we know, Pesity is not buying too much uh, startups. 
Uh, so what's your assessment of uh, 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 in this area? So in, my op in our opinion, uh, we believe that uh, PZU is, uh, is developing in that uh, segment. We can see that uh, on the website of PZU, now you can buy almost uh, all types of insurance uh, and uh, two or three years ago, it wasn't so easy. So we can see the uh, significant progress in uh, that, uh, in that uh, thing. Uh, and uh, also, uh, PZU uh, cooperates uh, with some startups. It will, wants to support its activity. So we can see that uh, the company seeks for further uh, improvement on that field. You've mentioned that in your presentation, but I wanted to add follow up a question on the impact of the increase in the interest rates on the banks and the insurance operations. What will be the impact? And the second question, your assumptions regarding the combined ratio. What will it drive in the future? What, what factors will drive the combined ratio? Okay, if I may start by saying what the, is the impact of interest rates on the insurer's activity. As we know, the insurer, uh, uh, invest the premiums it earns so it is a big part of uh, company profits uh, comes from investments so we believe that adverse interest rate movements will impact uh, poorly PZU's net profit however PZU has a strong uh, investment uh, portfolio as for example in 20 year government bonds which will expire only in 10 years therefore it is able to secure still a big part of investment profits with a stable income. Uh, increase in, of increase in interest rates, how will it affect the insurance and the banking operations? Oh, so the interest in, uh, in increase. Increase, in, increase in interest rates uh, on the insurer front will positively impact the positive pes operation as it will, for example, decrease the level of required capital Therefore, furthermore, increasing capital safety of PZU. And uh, when it comes to banks, uh, if uh, interest rate uh, increase, it will have positive impact on the activity of banks, as uh, usually with uh, higher interest years, interest rates, banks are able to earn uh, slightly more uh, than when on, well, than when interest rates are low. And of course, the other effect of uh, higher interest rates is the higher cost of capital. So, it would, it, so to sum up, it would negatively impact the, uh, the only valuations that are paribus of uh, both PZU and banks, but it would positively impact the, uh, the earnings of banks and PZU. When it comes to the question about combined ratio, uh, we decided to uh, set on the steady level the uh, claims ratio because it's hard to predict what we 